Yo, what is going on, everybody? Happy Sunday. What are we, May 22nd? The month is almost wrapping up, uh, which, you know, we're just speaking of wrapping up, we just wrapped the finale, the season three finale of Atlanta. And that's what we're discussing today. Um, you know, Tahare, you know, and Van and her mental breakdown and the crazy escapades and all the stuff she got herself into in this season finale. And I'm so excited to be here with you all talking about it. Uh, I will be having a guest. He will be joining us. Uh, it's, you know, spoiler alert. This is Brandon from Just My Opinion Reviews. And it might be one of the person that might be able to join us potentially a little bit later in the discussion. But hey, guys, if this is your first time tuning in, welcome. Happy Sunday. Again, hope you're having a great day. Uh, we are here to discuss this finale. We are here to discuss all the, the stuff that we got in this episode, the van moments, the crazy moments, the more... Um, you know, the mental breakdown moment and, of course, the post credit scenes. We will be discussing that and then we'll kind of pivot the conversation and kind of talk about the season as a whole. You know, what episodes were our favorite um, and, of course, what we hope to get in the, uh, you know, season four, which is, you know, unfortunately the last season of Atlanta. But we have so many things to discuss today. I'm so excited to be here with you all. So if this is your first time tuning in, do me a favor. And, and for everyone tuning in, first off, we got 68 people watching live. We had, we had people in the chat waiting for us to go live. I appreciate every single one of you all if you can do me a favor you see that little thumbs up button you know on on the youtube uh whether you're on your computer or your phone or your tablet hit that button you know it just spreads out the video to everyone that loves this show <clears throat> just as much as we do uh as well as share this video if you know anyone else that enjoys this uh, this show uh, or likes these type of conversations, and if you have a social media platform, um, definitely spread it out to your audience. Let us uh, let's have a, a great discussion today, uh, and of course. We're live. So throw in your live questions in the chat. Um, you know, what, what theories you have, predictions you have, <coughs> uh, join the conversation. And then, of course, if you have any like pressing questions for myself and my guests a little bit later, uh, not needed, not required. But if you have like a pressing question, you definitely want to get answered. We do have Streamlabs open, uh, you know, PayPal, uh, Cash App, as well as the Super Chat. So if you do have a question, you definitely want to get answered. Definitely, uh, you know, by all means, send it to those outlets and we will get to those questions as soon as possible. So with all that being said, uh, let me check in and see who we got in the chat. Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's catch up here. <clears throat> uh, question. Okay, we'll get to the yeah, we'll definitely get to those questions here. Just saying what's up to everyone here. What's going on, Brandon? Um, <clears throat> we got King in here. The paperboy, we got here. We'll get to those. We got uh Zia Latrice. How we doing? How you doing today? <clears throat> what's going on? What's going on? And you know, before we get into, you know, I'll answer some of these questions actually before we kind of get into today's discussion and wait for our guests to get in here. Uh, let me pull up the first question here, which was Swipe Lee. Uh, with the white urns luggage being sent to black urn, does this mean the standalone episodes are? Oh, yeah, we'll 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 get into that, Lee. Uh, because I definitely uh, have some thoughts on it. And, and of course, when our guest gets in here, we'll we'll pick his brain on that. That'll be a little bit later in the discussion, but I will definitely make sure to tie back to that question, Lee. And, and shout out to you for uh stopping by and showing some love man that had in a few months she lost it over there yeah i mean well it seemed like she um prior to even going to you know um paris she was going through a little bit of a mental breakdown so i think it was just a matter of just trying to get another perspective and and, and live another lifestyle and it kind of hit home once she someone from her home uh and candace in this instance kind of snapped her out of it right so yeah we'll, we'll get into those discussions for sure but shout out to you brandon great question there or comment uh check and that's why she was able to it's a good question that that might tie into the discussion that we'll have a little bit later regarding the uh post credit scene it is is it canon is all that stuff canon that we saw in episodes one um what was it one four um seven and nine we'll talk about that a little bit later but shout out to you with the, with the great question there and a the great comment I, I definitely think there's some validity in that theory regarding um things that are canon and might not be canon we'll definitely get into that discussion a little bit later um <clears throat> yeah van didn't mention her kid yeah i mean well yeah she i mean lottie was brought up and it, that was seems like that was the the straw that brought the camels back to kind of get her back into snapping back into reality so many questions yes there is and we uh again th throw those questions in the chat and we'll try to get to those as we can as we move along um and as like i said as, before we get into today's discussion too just let me know how you guys are right now as far as excitement level for season four based on season three of course we'll talk about season four predictions at the end but just let me know after thursday's episode 
were you just as excited for season four or a little bit maybe on the fence about season four let me know those those uh how you guys feel about that let me know that in the chat All right, so we got 84 people watching live, and again, guys, I thank you so much for number one. Let me let me backtrack a little bit. These past 10 weeks have been so awesome to meet so many new different people within the space that love this show, uh, that have so many uh, thoughts and theories and predictions, and of course, the other thing too that I really loved about this particular season and the conversations we had was just the. Um, the stories you guys shared in the comment section, you know, there were a lot of comments and I appreciate all the engagement on the videos. Uh, and I read, uh, I tried to get through as many comments as possible. And there were so many great things, how people related to certain episodes and related to their lives and things of that nature. And that's kind of the beauty of this show, uh, is that relatability factor and just kind of, um, you know, being able to relate to these stories. So for every single one of you all watching these videos, these past 10 weeks, I really appreciate it. Uh, and I'm really excited to continue the conversation and, and kind of, I guess to kind of pivot uh, the conversation a little bit on my last video, I have posed a question and the, uh, in the pinned comment section, <clears throat> I'm going to want, I want to continue these conversations. And a lot of you all responded to that, that question and said that you guys would love to do uh, a weekly watch along. So with that being said, I'm, I'm happy to announce that and, and let me know in the comments for those that are watching live Thursday, since we know Atlanta comes on on Thursdays, would a Thursday, like a 9 p.m. Central Time work for you all to do our live watch alongs? Let me know. Uh, but I'm just, like I said, I'm happy to announce that we will continue to have these conversations on Thursdays. Um, uh, and hopefully every week we can watch each episode leading up into season four. So uh, we will be bringing that to the table. But without that being said, our guest is in the waiting room. Uh, I already let you all know who it was, but I'm going to go ahead and still introduce him. Uh, he's He was on the channel last week, had a lot of uh, great things to say and uh, just a great uh, conversation we had and i definitely wanted to bring him back this week and i've had him on a channel multiple times and i've been on his channel as well uh but it's always a pleasure to just interact with him every single time i'm talking about the one and only brandon from just my opinion reviews what's going on b hey hey, hey what's going on how you doing doing good man doing good on this sunday how's your day going so far man pretty good man pretty good uh woke up early uh took care of a few things watched some good tv uh, Time Traveler's Wife is another good show that's uh, okay. that's new. So uh, HBO, right? Yeah, HBO Max. So it's it's pretty good, man. It's pretty good. It's pretty nice, good. Nice, man. Will you, will you be? Uh, we got some some reviews coming from you on that one, man. I, I think so. I think okay. I think so. If 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 the people want it, they may get it. So um, you know, I, I definitely enjoyed the first two episodes. There we go, man. Well, hey, Brandon, like I said, I know I had you on the channel last week and before, but just in case this is their first time seeing uh, Brandon from Just My Opinion Reviews, why don't you <clears> let them know who you are, man, where they can find your awesome content? Hey, 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 what's going on, everyone? Well, like Elliot said, uh, and thank you for having me, sir. I'm uh, Brandon Keith Avery with Just My Opinion Reviews. I've uh, been doing this for a little bit. If you uh, come over to my channel, um, which is in the description of this video, you can see it, Just My Opinion Reviews. Uh, YouTube, uh, give you movie reviews, spoiler movie reviews. I've done a few of those with Elliot. I do TV recaps uh, for various shows that pop up on all these streaming platforms. I was just talking about uh, Time Traveler's Wife. That was great. Of course, right now we're talking about Atlanta. You know, I do random lives here and there. I also have a weekly movie news roundup show every Sunday at 6 30 p.m. So later on today, I'll be doing that as well. And so, uh, you know, I'm just a geek, a fan of movies and love talking about it and giving my uh, opinion and, you know, engaging with the people out there and seeing how they feel. And so, you know, if the, if you like that type of stuff, you can subscribe to my channel and also follow me on social media with my handle right there on the screen. And so, yeah, that's just uh, what you'll get if you um, come over into my space. Yes, sir. You guys heard him here again for movie reviews, TV reviews, and easily one of the best. Like uh, between you and E Man, man, y'all guys be killing it every single week. Like you, you guys are my ESPN. You're my sports centers for the movie <laughs> and, and, and TV news. And I've been, uh, you know, fortunate enough to be on your channel to talk about those movie news, man. Which speaking of, uh, B, uh, uh, Mission Impossible. I sent you a link yesterday. Did you get a chance to check out that trailer, bro? That I, I don't condone leaking, but I, I had to watch it. Man. Did you get a chance to check it out? I did not. I tried to uh, click it, and the link was, it was not already working. gone. Yeah, yeah, man. yeah I, I guess man. apparently because you know we know uh, Top Gun Maverick's coming out next week or this week, I should say, and I think they're going to be playing the trailer in front of the film. But unfortunately, it kind of made its way online, and uh, I was fortunate enough to to check it out. B and it's. Uh, 
Looks pretty good. It's looking fire, bro. Really? It's looking fire, man. Yeah, I'm uh, bringing okay. Tom Cruise Mission Impossible fans out there. Let us know if you got a chance to check out that trailer. Uh, I think it's coming out. It was supposed to come out this year, but you know, obviously with the delays, it's coming out next year. But it's 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 fire, B. It's it's gotcha. looking good, gotcha. bro. I'm okay. really, really have, have you yeah. seen uh, Top Gun Maverick yet? I have not. That's uh, tomorrow. I will be gotcha. Uh, gotcha. going to the academy tomorrow to mm. to watch it. But did you get a chance to check it out yet? Uh, tomorrow for me as well. Tomorrow nice, for man. me as well. Yeah. Nice yeah. man. Are you are you a fan of the original? The uh, what is it? Uh, 86, I I actually one of the things I got done this morning was I started watching uh, Top Gun for the first time. That's Netflix. right. We talked about that. Yeah. yeah did you finish yeah. it or you still kind of? I didn't finish it because uh, okay. I wanted to start the time traveler's wife, but I did yeah. like it. You know, uh, 80s, that, that old uh, soundtrack was coming in, man. I was like, ah, yeah, Danger Zone. Yeah, the I, was, zone. I, was, uh, I was in there, you know. Listen, so, uh, man, that film, yeah. were you sweating, B, when you watch? Because, I mean, everyone, the whole, every scene is just everyone sweating like they're in hell. Yeah, that's that's, that's <laughs> funny you say that, uh, especially your boy Tom Cruise. Uh, he was an interesting in character, too, man. Uh, yeah, man. You know, he was a very confident, cocky, but humble all at the same time. Yeah. You know, um, it, it's just nice seeing all that practical effects and, yeah. you know, uh, of all the aerial shots and stuff, because we don't really get it like that anymore. It's just you yeah. know, done in the computer. Yep. So it, it was nice to take a trip back to, I think it came out of what, 86? I think so, bro. Yeah. I think it was 86, uh, yeah. I think I was two years old at the time. So Yeah. Yeah, it, it, it was, I'm looking forward to the rest and I'm yeah, looking bro. forward to this sequel that I'm going to see tomorrow. Uh, with everybody raving Everyone's about it, saying it's the this, yeah, it's, they're saying yeah. it's it. This is right, it, B. right? So I'm I'm um I'm I'm happy right now. I'm happy and looking forward to all this we got coming. No doubt, man. Well, as you guys can see, Brandon not only covers TV shows but also movies. So, like he said, you know his link is in the bio. Check him out. Subscribe to him. Let's get him to 40k. Uh, well deserved. Again, great content creator, great dude. So definitely do yourself a favor, guys, and check him out. And also check out his review, as he mentioned for Atlanta, to get his thoughts on this episode as well. So. With that being said, B, let's let's just kind of start off with the with the softball questions. Van, <laughs> yes. she, she's going through it, man. Uh, I, I watched your review, great review, by the way, man. And I, I saw you were kind of just like you were kind of in the middle about just this being the like as like and as an episode, it was you know interesting and all this stuff. But as a finale, I know you weren't really as and correct me if I'm wrong, you weren't as satisfied with the finale. Now, fast forward to you know three days later. Do you still feel the same or have you rewatched it and maybe gain a little bit more, uh, I don't know, appreciation of the episode? Where do you stand uh, with this finale? Well, I have not rewatched the episode since it premiered, but I did see it twice before I posted my recap and before Thursday. Um, I was not enthused enough to um, go and rewatch the episode again. Um, last week, I was very excited. I played the episode for the third or fourth time right before we went live, uh, but I didn't share the same enthusiasm. However, I'm, I'm still back and forth, Elliot. Uh, yeah. This is not a bad episode, but I'm disappointed that it is the season finale. Mm. If this was maybe episode three, four, five, or six, seven, somewhere um, in the middle of the season, uh I, I think i would be a little bit more happy but for this this just kind of seemed like a cliffhanger to me mm -hmm. um i understand and respect the message um you know that it that it tried to put out there in the streets you know for our senses you know focusing on black women and i have been humbled as well by some of my comments in my video um especially hearing hey Zia, especially hearing from some of the women out there however i'm still disappointed um you know, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna go back and watch it and, and pick up some things that I missed yeah. uh, that you, you know, went over because, you know, your, your review, your recap was was amazing. Um, but I'm, I'm still on the fence, man. It's just I think I would have liked it a lot better if it was in the middle of the season. I don't mm -hmm. know why this was a season finale. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't get me excited for season four. I'm going to watch season four. Right, right, right. I'm going to watch it. You know, yeah. I'm going to give it a chance. Of course, I'm not trying to, like, cancel the show. Yeah, but I, I'm not excited at this point in time, you know, um, and that's interesting. You know, for me, half of these episodes are great. Half of them were, eh, hmm. you know, nothing bad, but eh. yeah, and, you know, that's just me, though. And and mm -hmm. I, I respect everyone else's 
um, you know, view on, on this finale and the mm -hmm. whole season as well. You know, I've, I've heard it from, as I'm, as I'm sure you have, I've heard both ends. People have said, this oh, is yeah. brilliant. <laughs> this is a masterpiece. Yeah, man. Donald Glover. Mwah. Right. Other people was like, this is trash. <laughs> Atlanta is not good like it used to be. It's mm -hmm. going down the crapper. So, you know, um, and I'm in the middle of all that. <laughs> so, <laughs> Yeah. But no, it, it's uh, on the cool though. It, it's more good than bad, man. No, yeah. I, 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 seriously, seriously, it, it was a great episode, man. It just wasn't my favorite. I, I just said that it, it wasn't my favorite. I, I wanted more. I expected more. Um, and I'll, I'll leave it at that for now. Well, well said, man. And I definitely, like you said, B. There's been some definitely. Uh, I haven't I haven't seen a lot of in the middle. I've seen either people like you saw brought up brilliance and just kind of fits within the narrative of what this season kind of gave us. What this I guess is just the abstract. You know, exactly, I mean, it's just yeah. it's, it's unconventional TV. It's not following traditional sitcom route where we're following our characters and their lives and days in and day out. It's like this is. Characters going to Europe to pee on people and characters eating fried hands and, you know, getting beat up by baguettes. So it's definitely kind of throws you off, which can definitely be jarring for a lot of us out there. Um, and for me, B, I, I wouldn't say this episode is brilliant, um, but going back to just because I what I did before watching the episode, because I kind of knew it was going to be a van centric episode, was I went back and kind of watched those van previous episodes dating back mm -hmm. to season one. Mm -hmm. uh, which was, uh, I want to say it was called Value, which kind of show Van just kind of, she's always from Value to Champagne Poppy, which is when we got Candace the first time that she appeared in season two, mm -hmm. to, um, you know, Juneteenth. And just following her narrative, this is kind of like a, a good kind of arc just to kind of see she's always seeking things. She's always looking to fit in. She's trying to fit in with the Joneses with the Juneteenth episode. She's trying to go out with her friend, trying to, you know, separate herself from Earn and try to be her own person. So she's always trying to, She's lost, you know, and that's something I think we can all relate to. And I think this episode just kind of highlights for the first time this entire show. Number one, this is like Van being a different Van. We've never obviously seen her in this type of mindset and this type of uh, setting and just this persona she's putting on with the, with the French accent and the whole twisted version of Amelie story. But it, to, to that point, I think it was something different and unique from a different perspective from Van, which I hope we get that continuation of where she's at mentally come season four. So again, I wouldn't say it's brilliant, but also I wouldn't say it's trash. Like a lot of people were saying out there, I think it's a, a very unique, interesting perspective of a character that's always been kind of in the background. And now we're kind of getting the, um, a little bit of insight of where she's at mentally right now. And I, like I said, I think personally we can all, at least I can speak to myself. I can relate to just feeling lost at points and just being like, huh. what is life? Where am I at? Why am oh. I not here? Why is this person doing this, this, that, and the third? So I definitely, uh, male, female, however you identify, I think we can all kind of relate to that sense of just feeling uh, out of place sometimes. Uh, not not to this extreme. <laughs> right, right. Us, yeah, man. To a certain um, extent, for sure. Yeah, they, they and they definitely need to follow up with this on uh, I hope so, season bro. four. If, if yeah. they don't... That would be ridiculous. Um, I also want to say, like, you know, you use the word conventional, and I said abstract. I still got, I, I still respect Donald Glover for being different from what we're used to. Yeah, and and uh, I mean, I, the episodes are challenging. You know, yep. there's Easter eggs everywhere. Yeah, I mean, I think so, but every word has a meaning. Every word, every syllable, right? You know, and uh, that can be fun. You know, we don't like like he kind of joked in one of his. Uh, taglines or synopsis reads on imdb you know where are all the poop jokes we don't always need <laughs> and i'm not saying that everything out there is poop yeah but uh you know he, he he just wants to be different so that is respected whether i like it or not i i just gotta still give him that type of kudos you know i'm right there with you bro i always applaud um even so like most recently this is on a side tangent like a24 films right they, they're not all great they're all kind of different and unique in their own ways but i always applaud the creators that are at least taking the risk and doing something different and not doing the same uh cycle of you know rinse recycle repeat type of narrative so i always like the applaud and i know Dave, donald glover donald glover uh had mentioned couple months ago that this whole narrative of seasons one two three and four kind of like kanye west albums uh which are, are you are you a kanye fan uh no nah, man no. I, I'm I, I'm not really a fan of anybody I mean I like no. what is on I don't I like what is I you know if if there's something popular I got and, and I like I it I, I I'll go to it but I'm I'm not one that just buys albums and okay. you know downloads the CD or whatever I I, who's the, I, say, I say I said CD, CD so I'm like taking it back taking yeah, it over so yeah so <laughs> nothing against Kanye I'm yeah. just you know 
No, I, I, I mean, Kanye, he's definitely someone. And so for me, I'm, you know, being from Chicago, Kanye, Twista, you know, all them people, you know, I'm big gotcha. fans of this. So, you know, he, he released these albums to, you know, or released these seasons to a Kanye album, you know, uh, college dropout to late registration to his third album being graduation, which I think if this were to put that in that narrative, this was one of the most creative, unique you know, kind of unconventional seasons of, uh, you know, Atlanta. I would say this is more of a, a 808s and heartbreaks Kanye, to say the least. So uh, a very unique taste. And, and, you know, we got to, and before we pivot, we got 160 people watching live. Again, guys, like, share, comment, and leave your thoughts in the comments section. And uh, very happy. I didn't let you know, B, but we got another guest coming in, man. I think you know really? this individual here. Uh, I, I don't even want to say what she does. This is she. It's a little spoiler there. Uh, I'm going to have her introduce herself. And uh, so excited to have her on my channel for the first time. You've had her on your channel a few times. I think you might know who I'm talking about, B. We're talking about the one and only Struggle Reviews. What? Tyler, what's going on? <laughs> Uh, what's up? Stop it. <laughs> How we doing? I'm great. I'm great. You know, I had to get here. What y'all doing? What's going we, on? We, we got here talking about this crazy episode. And Tyra, I'm so glad you were able to join us. I was. Yes. Uh, I didn't want to let B know. I want to kind of surprise him. Yes. Like, hey, we yeah, we got the <laughs> I'm trying to put these thumbs up in this chat, but uh, yes, hey, what's going hey, on? You look hey. wonderful. I love, it. I love it all. I love it all. This is this is great, here, man. She's here. It, it matches the banner too. You know, what I'm right? Saying? That's, there you that's go. Dope. Look, that's synergy. Dope. It's all yeah, synergy it's here. All coming together. You know? Oh man. <laughs> well, well, Tyra, like I said, I've had the opportunity to kind of collab, interact with you on Brandon's channel, but I'm so thankful and honored to have you on my channel for the first time, and hopefully, you know, we can have many more collabs in the future. But for the people out there that aren't too familiar with the fire content you have out for the people and where they can find your thoughts why don't you let the people know uh where your awesome content can be found and a little bit about uh you know what you do on the platform all right i am struggle reviews tv i do a lot of things but i specialize right now in throwback reviews i do current stuff and i also uh do paid reviews so if you guys have your favorite throwback throwback movie and you don't mind spending 35 dollars to hear what i have to say it's a good time i'm i'm fun i like I, i'm loose we keep it loose on my channel you know i'm not all professional like being elliot my channel's ratchet <laughs> But it's a, it's a good time, and I'm just happy to be here and be immersed in this 25K you got going on over here. This is a good oh, time. Thank you. <laughs> well, listen, you said it, like, perfectly, Tyra. She has not – it's not – forget conventional. We talk about this show. Her channel is fire, guys. If you want to have – it's all about throwback. I, I love uh -huh. watching the reviews that she goes back to and the movies that I grew up with and her opinions on it, especially – Yes. Now, modern times, just looking at older films and Terrible listen, guys, <laughs> $35, that's that's a steal because she's giving you skits. She's giving you thoughtful <gasps> comments, the oh, comedy. Yeah, like, when, oh. when is the tour? Uh, time, when enough. is the comedy yeah. tour? When, when, the when comedy tour, tour? <laughs> I am not a comedian. Like, I think the comedian here will be B. I don't, I'm, I'm not a comedian. Like, I just, I'm just genuine. Like, y'all get full-blown Tyra on the channel. It's, it's a good time. Y'all need to come on by and, and say what's up. It is definitely a good time, guys. <laughs> And uh, I definitely can't recommend enough. Check her out and, and check out the fire content. But Tyra, listen, we we we'll kind of pivot back, rewind a little bit. I, I got B's opinion on the episode. He said he was just kind of like in the middle, which it was maybe placed differently in the season. But why don't you let us know how you felt about the uh, the finale and just kind of your general opinion on this very divisive third season yeah divisive is a good word um i was i was kind of in between i really love the direction of the show in the diversity and the social commentary it was given but it didn't come off genuine to me this season mm -hmm. like i was really bothered that we steered so far away from our main characters because that's what hey that's what i love about the show like I love just the investment that we've been because this is our first time just strictly. I think every other episode was, you know, he was trying to hit a pivot of this is the social topic that we're talking about, or he's trying to bring awareness to something, which is great. But I got really accustomed to, you know, following Van and Earn and their journeys. And I was like, oh, Earn got a job. Like he legit, you know, he's been shaking and jobbing forever. Like I was really interested to see where we would go. So to see us kind of pivot from that and go a totally different direction i really miss i feel like we missed a lot of opportunities with the cast and 
just I, I really miss just them as you know people that genuine you know push back in the back and forth that we get when they're just sitting around it, the show always kind of reminded me of Seinfeld a little bit like mm -hmm, the show about mm -hmm. nothing like Seinfeld. it would be like you know nothing going on and I, I love that like I love the crazy and it made me appreciate like you know um you know the alligator man Teddy Perkins <laughs> episodes so much more because yeah. it was it was a shock or you know the black Justin Bieber like those were like out of nowhere and it kept yeah. it but it just seemed like we got that that felt so special to me prior seasons like every single episode so i didn't feel like i was reveling in it because every single episode i was like well damn what's going on like i have a calculator like a plus like it was it was <laughs> and they were so layered and so interesting but it yeah. just kind of felt dis disjointed from you know where we've been and who we've been following for two seasons and mm -hmm. as far as the finale like oh i was i was like damn this is the finale <laughs> I was, I was, I got the points. I got all the references. And I was like, as soon as I saw Van in that wig, I was like, oh, this is the French Amelie. So we're about to go all off into her imagination and, you know, her escapism thing that she had going on and just living her best life, not being concerned with what's going on when low key she's trying to disappear and be off the grid and mm -hmm. not deal with the everyday struggles of what she has going on in her life. But I think once we had Van just show up and be uncountable, she's disappearing, Van is blowing her up we knew probably like not even halfway through the season that van wasn't van and oh, she yeah. was like low-key having a midlife crisis happening she's lost she you know she came there to find her way and since she's just we saw van stealing i was like okay yeah she pushed old girl in the pool we we already knew that you know something was wrong <laughs> and it was off, kind yeah. of distracting for us to use that whole season finale just to tell us circle back and go oh y'all know van is having a midlife crisis well no we knew we knew, <laughs> we, something knew was that, off. we knew that already so i right. wish we could have touched on a little bit more and i i love van but she is just not the cast member that i go to like oh i wonder what's going on with van yeah i love following um earn and not you not that she's you know not important but yeah. i feel like um let's see no darius is darius and darius, earn is yeah. earn but yeah. the person who has like Paperboy, his whole story arc and mm -hmm. his his you know battle with his inner self and who he is and the newfound fame and that is so interesting to me and I feel yeah. like we we you know didn't get as much but I feel like that's the meat and potatoes of the show his journey his arc his story is in connected to everybody Everyone. else yep. so he's kind of like the main dude so for us to end off with Van I was a little I was a little disappointed and it's not mm -hmm. like we just ended off with Van we ended off it was a fuck like what are the girl in the episode she was like this looks like Candyman like it was <laughs> it, it, it pivoted <laughs> off into like horror as territory and you know yeah. Alexander Skarsgård and I was like what, what Ashanti. <laughs> yeah <laughs> And then she we have, like, the whole interlude of a 30-minute peace session. I was like, well, damn. <laughs> and then once we got to the end, and it took me a minute because I had told B, I was like, I don't know what, what the ending is. I know who the Deftones are. I was a new Metal fan. I know that group. Yeah. But I don't know. I was like, I remember this man's face in the picture. And then I texted mm -hmm. I was like, B, answer the phone. It's the man who shot himself <laughs> in the episode. Yeah, I, I got it. I got it. And I was like, yeah. that's all great. And it just, you know, circled back. <laughs> to oh this is all in the same universe he mm. like low-key i'm guessing old earned reparations and that's why he you know got his stuff or you know is that what's going on here i just i was i was just i was disappointed with the season and with the finale honestly well listen Tyra, well said a lot of great <laughs> stuff you said there. and the two things i want to point out that i know that you mentioned in regards to just the, the season as a whole and we'll get into the episode here in a second uh yeah. was i i definitely we talked about it, but you appreciated the, the, the switch in tone. But I, I honestly think this was, regardless of the pandemic, because we know the show has been absent for four years. Yeah. I think, honestly, this is where the show was always going to go. Because we obviously yeah. know in season two, they left. They went on the plane. They were going to go to Europe. Yeah. And, and I was watching. I don't know if you guys got the opportunity to check. Um, there's an interview, like a 45-minute interview, when they premiered the first two episodes on uh, South by Southwest. Mm -hmm. And they wrote these scripts. And they pretty much stayed, even though they had the long break. These are stories from 2019. Uh, yeah. So they they kept so it, I think this was always going to be the narrative. And I think that's what I really appreciate about this season more than anything is just that they mm -hmm. they want to be different. Yeah, they did not want to be back in Atlanta. They want to take Atlanta to, to overseas. Yeah. And, and it was 
Very much so. I've I've traveled overseas a couple times, and it is, and I think this the season encapsulates that feeling of when you're out of your comfort zone, it feels mm-hmm. very uncomfortable. It feels very different, and your everything's weird. As these episodes were weird, yes. uh, very distorted, <laughs> very just kind of leaving you like, what's going on? Like you mentioned, uh, Tyra, some of the stuff you had to like kind of look up. Like, wait, what is this yeah. this tradition of of white people wearing blackface? Like, this isn't <laughs> like what what's going on yeah. here? So I think it was that was the intent to just. We've been gone for a long period of time and we want to come back different. With a bang. With a yeah. bang. And and to be fair too, with this creative root and, and to get your thoughts on it, Brandon, is you know, for and just for us as humans, you know, I'm I'm not the same person I was four years ago, right? I, I would hope that I'm I'm a little bit more different and and you know have different perspectives versus you know going back to just them being on the couch and them chilling mm-hmm. in Atlanta and stuff like that. So yeah. that's where I kind of applaud this season is that it was just such a different shift, but understanding that it can be very jarring. But your thoughts on that, B, yeah. as far as just that that whole progression of these people are getting older, they're getting a little bit more wiser, they want to experience different things in life. Well, yeah, yeah that kind of goes back to what Tara was saying uh, with um, Al's journey, you know? Yeah. Uh, I mean, at the very beginning, he wanted this, this, and that, and then he kind of got it, and now he's running from fans. And so, and I also agree with you. I don't, I, I hope I'm smarter and wiser than I was four years ago. Um, you know, I hope I'm smart. I wasn't, I was six months ago. I think right. I am, you know? Yeah. And so, um, all that is fine. I know. And you said the word drawing, um, all of these episodes were interesting, man. It's just that they were just so open. Yeah. I just yeah. want a conclusion to all of them. Like to <laughs> yeah. every single one, it may be an explanation. I mean, I want to know what's up with socks. Was this, is that his name? Yeah. yeah. They put up, they put his ass in a drawer, man. He's yeah. They, they, yeah. They play and come back. I don't want in the to corner. Him. And, yeah. um, you know, the conversation with, with Al and Aaron about the ownership of the, the, the masters the yeah. masters yeah. you know it's like i i want to know what Which i still have about. questions about that because the way yeah. Ern said I, yeah did you? i was like oh, okay Ern, okay yeah I, I i i loved it but i just it just i really love when we got the shocker episodes it just took some of the sting out of it for me like when mm. we got it it was like oh man because i remember the feeling i had and where i was with the teddy perkins episode like it just felt like like a gift you know yep. and now it just kind of felt like oh this is this is just what we're getting period it just didn't feel as special and it felt more like um like statement pieces and like shock you know shock moments and I like that, but I don't. I don't want to, you know, break out my calculator every <laughs> single episode. You know, yeah. sometimes I just like and just not, not them. I didn't want them, you know, just resting on the couch doing nothing, chilling, right. you know, right. waiting on Tracy to steal something. I wasn't, you know, waiting on that. We gotta get Tracy I back really, for season four. I know that he better be yes, back in season really, four. <laughs> I really wanted to to see them in their element in Amsterdam yeah. and go on that full journey with them. And I just didn't feel like we got that. We got some of it, but we got yeah. so much more when I still wanted to, you know, get just just them as, you know, as people and where they yeah. were. But I, I, I love the season. I love um, uh, like it was. God, it was a lot. Like it was so many think pieces here, which is mm-hmm. always great to have. You're never gonna get bored with an Atlanta show or an episode. It's interesting, but I would be lying toes. if I said like I wasn't disappointed that we steered so far away from our characters. And when we did get them, I felt like who they are as people and the traits that we follow were so long were kind of beeline by. Yeah, this is Darius going on one of his adventures, but oh uh-huh. uh, yeah, it's a lady trying to you know steal and get the fufu for herself. Like you know, I it was still made to be a statement piece in a moment when yeah. I just like to just travel, you know, sometimes with Darius and see what the hell he has going on because he's crazy. And even with mm-hmm. that. I was a little disappointed with because we were focusing on so much more. I was like, I was waiting, like, can we please give Darius something? Like, can he, you know, because it was so much growth on everybody else's part. And, that, and yeah. maybe it's intentional, you know, moving into, you know, the next season. But I was like, damn, oh, Darius yeah. is still Darius. <laughs> <laughs> little different hair color, you know, a different yeah. mustache, it's, it's the same. Uh, but the same old do. Yeah, I, I definitely think, and we'll get to it towards the end as far as uh, expectations for season four. I think we're going to we're gonna go back to Atlanta uh, yeah. and see, obviously, what this trip and this uh, tour has done to them back in Atlanta. But I definitely, uh, and I mentioned earlier uh, in regards to how Donald Glover wanted these to be like kind of like albums. And yeah. he particularly said he wanted these to be like a Kanye West journey of his album from college mm-hmm. dropout to late registration to you come with graduation and 808 to 
heartbreak. So this is definitely that in an artist yeah. perspective when you get like even, you know, I don't know if you guys are Kendrick Lamar fans, but even his most recent album is so vastly different from Damn and Damn is vastly yeah. different from, you know, uh, To Pimp a Butterfly. So this is definitely yeah. like like you guys said, it was very jarring. But I think this might be one of those seasons if people do feel the urgency and the need to go back, they're probably going to go back and be like, man, this yeah. is hidden different now, right? Or this is yeah. kind of this different. So I think this might have some rewatchability in mm -hmm. the future, uh, but we'll see what comes of that. But kind of transitioning into the episode, B, we we, we meet Candace and uh, her friends going over to Europe. And I know you mentioned in your, uh, your review, uh, and, and this could be for men, women, how are you identify? I'm just curious, Brandon. Would you, uh, you know, take any any kink <laughs> jobs? Would you, if someone was paying you six thousand dollars, be to I don't know, lick their toes for six grand and go to Paris? Brandon, put I mean, it out there. Are you doing this, bro? I, I don't want to get too personal, <laughs> but um, you know, that that that's that's a lot easier than than urinating on somebody yeah, I, that, or, or yeah, vice versa. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, six, yeah, six thousand dollars that that would make uh, a lot of people, you know, reevaluate uh, their thoughts. Uh, but no, I know I posed the question in my video. Uh, you know, has anyone ever done that before? Uh, I've never been in the situation um, mm -hmm. myself, to be honest with you. No one has ever made the request. I have never <laughs> requested it from anybody. Um, I don't know what I would do if somebody was like, "Hey, do you wanna you wanna uh, urinate on me? I'll give you six k uh, to do yeah. it." I don't know. Um, mm. I don't know. I, I think, and know. also six. I, that's a little. I don't know, Tyree. Is that a little, little, little low price? Because I'm, I'm thinking it's like five, six thousand dollars just to mm -hmm. go to Europe itself. So mm -hmm. I don't know. Maybe yeah. she was selling herself a little short. <laughs> well, if you are paying for me to get there, like, hey, it's personally, I would have been outside. I would have been there. <laughs> personally, like I have been propositioned many a times. Now, of course. <laughs> You know, I don't know, maybe it's a female thing, and you yeah. know, you get your little I get a plethora of like, hey, can you just slather me in peanut butter? I'll pay you. I have wow. gotten all kinds of stuff. I yeah. just want you to walk around and clean my house or something. I don't want you to do like personally, I will be there, like, hey, it's your fetish is your fetish and your kink yeah. is your kink. As long as it's safe, <laughs> right? And I know it's no sexual shit involved. You just want me to pee on you. Mm. Okay. Have my money in the bank and I'm I'm leaving. Yes, ladies, I'll and let us know in the chat as well, please. Yeah, let us know. Uh, however, you identify is this a, is this a uh, uh, an occupation you all would uh, you know look into? And I'm trying to pull up a. I don't know for my tower, my uh, my tower. fans out there of uh, of Dave Chappelle when she as soon as she brought up the whole PJ, I just just my mind went is uh, drip 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 pisses on you. Yes. Like, this is where I was went. Uh, yes. So listen, yeah. as Sarah said, it's it's you know to each their own. People have their things. Um, and and peeing is one of them, you know. I would so, be dishonest if I was like, oh, I would never. Yeah. I would go. I would definitely. And, and it's different. Like it's not like it's Tyrone up the street. You're gonna fly right. to Paris. Right. Paris. <laughs> Paris. Paris. So she said, "What? What now, about you, Elliot?" <laughs> I, would, I would prefer eight. Personally, I would like yeah. eight thousand. You know. Right. But I would definitely like. I would shoot it down for six. Like, hey, six thousand is six thousand. Six grand. I mean, yeah. Let's answer A lot your question. Of us have done yeah. worse for less. Let's there you go. Here. There you go. <laughs> hey. To be honest. Listen, man, That's true. You gotta gotta keep the lights on. Gotta pay those bills, B. Yeah. I mean, if someone was offering a good amount, man, I, I you know, oh, we gosh. never know. Never, never know. know. You, you never know. Never man. know. Okay. No, you that whole situation that was giving me because we always hear stories about Dubai and women getting flown out and doing all these tasteless yeah. things. But mm -hmm. it's always the flip side, like the man in Dubai are doing all of these derogatory, exploitative right, things to right. women. Oh no, you want to fly me out to pee on you? As long as you're not trying to pee on me. <laughs> 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 well, there, there was the. So you guys know our, our. There's our P comments. There's our commentary on the pits. Let us know in the comments, guys, how you all would have uh, took that in. But going to you, Tyra, we we got a, a character we haven't seen since season two. Uh, you know, we talked about getting those throwback vibes. This is a throwback character. You know, uh, yes. Candace. We saw her in Champagne Poppy, which I don't think is a coincidence that she was involved in this episode. That all. was that was a van centric <laughs> focus, like where she's at, trying to get you know broke mm -hmm. up with her boyfriend earn i want to get a picture with drake uh so yeah. your thoughts on candace and just overall was you happy to see her back and just your thoughts on her being um a friend back home to kind of get her back on the on the on the straight path i was happy to see i was happy to see anybody i was like oh it's candace like right. i was like oh she's gonna find 
when I saw that, I was like, oh, she's going to find Van and maybe snap her back. I wasn't expecting Van to be a full-on Frenchie. I was like, oh, hell, like <laughs> this is not what I thought it was going to be. But I was very happy <laughs> to see her and for her to be kind of the voice of reason because, you know, via yep. last ep that episode from that last season. And this one, she's all for, you know, an opportunity. Like, you know, I'm doing what I got to do. I'm just, I'm just trying to be outside and be a girl and get you know get taken care of i'm trying to she a city girl i'm trying to get flued out she's there to mm -hmm. pee on someone yeah. but instantly when she sees you know how like off 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 van is that goes out the window and it's just like oh my god what are you doing why are you out here being why are you, why are you out here someone like <laughs> yep. so it, it's just a whole different thing and i think it was very on um, point with how her perception changed all the way towards the end and it's just like yeah i see the bigger picture now and they both kind of grew as women in that moment it's just like aren't yep. you here to be on someone's like no i'm absolutely not i need to reevaluate my life because I, yep. I can't be out here doing this because you know last she was you know following and trying to catch the drake train like mm -hmm. she she had her own little arc that whole episode and we saw some growth from her because she saw like what the hell am I doing versus what, what Van, what are we doing? We need to do better and we need to take care of each other. Yeah, I totally agree with you, B, man. Your thoughts on Candace being brought back. And, you know, as someone mentioned in the comments and even Tyra brought it up, it, it does sometimes take the people from home or people that kind of know you from where you used to be to kind of snap you out of this wild, chaotic, uh, you know, downward spiral that she's going through. What do you think about Candace and her presence in this episode? Oh, I thought it was great, man. I thought it was fantastic. She did a great job. Um, as soon as she popped up, I knew immediately who she was and I was happy. Um, it even inspired me to go back and rewatch that Champagne Poppy episode, uh, you know, season two, episode seven. So I went back and watched the, the whole thing. And um, from comparing both episodes, I really liked the growth in her character from Champagne Poppy to uh, the season finale here. She seemed like a real true friend in this episode, really concerned. And uh, there's a lot of value in that. And I, I really did appreciate that. Um, and the Champagne Poppy, and I said the growth in her character, uh, not saying that there is anything wrong with this at all, because there's not, but she just seemed like a really, par like a, a big time party girl, you know, like want to be on, on scene. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, nothing wrong with that because I know I was in these streets, you know, going out every party and club. Yeah. And, you know, that was just, a, you know, that's a stage in life. Yep. But it, <clears throat> now she, she's grown now. I don't know girl code per se. But Tyra, you can help me out if you like. But I've heard, you know, women say, hey, if we arrive together, we you know, we're going to leave together. She <laughs> texting them like, hey, me and uh, DJ, we finna go to T-Pain party, yep. you know, and mm -hmm. had them walking yes. uh, yep. at the end of the episode, <laughs> yep. you know, while she's over here uh, popping bottles with T-Pain. Mm -hmm. They literally mm -hmm. walking in the street. So I'm like, damn, I've, <laughs> yeah. I've never, I've never um, heard of, like, I, I just remember my, I was just thinking about this when I was watching the episode. I remember specifically in my college days, like women telling me like, hey, they will be with their girls. Mm -hmm. But when they get that phone call from like, hey, are you still up? You know, so, yeah. that's their priority. <clears throat> but they still going to make sure that their girls get yeah. home safe. Like, hey, right. I just got the call. Where can I drop y'all off? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. hey, if, you know? And so Candace, Candace didn't do that. She just mm -hmm. was trying to get over the T-Pain. <laughs> However, in this episode, she was real concerned, you know, yeah. like, uh, and, and to be truthful, I'm not promoting this, that women do this, but at the same time, I can't understand if somebody's going to fly you across the world and offer you 6K to just to piss on them and that's it, and mm -hmm. you can guarantee safety, I can't get mad at you for taking that deal, you know what I'm saying? So, I'm and she had her homegirls with her, yeah, so it wasn't like she was right, going right, by right, herself, right, yeah. Right, 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 so, um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm just being honest with you, you know what I'm saying? Uh, she's getting the bag, that's mm -hmm. it just, it's just easy money. Yep. But uh, but going from that where she's you know she she dipped on them too like she's really concerned like y'all y'all don't know oh girl she tripping, you mm -hmm. know like and, and 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 coming to the end where Van you know snapped back to him was throwing the plates she didn't she didn't run up the stairs like uh I, I forgot oh boy uh, oh boy Mar Marcel she, I think yeah Marcel yeah there you go <laughs> she was she was like you know we're gonna get through this and, 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 mm -hmm. and listen so i I was just kind of like wow you know like mm -hmm. hey here's candace again i remember her from you know acting this way but she's a completely different person now and um 
you know, I, I respect her involvement, you know, her level of involvement. Throw and, some and plates, then beat somebody with stale bread. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Catch yeah. bodies like they, right. stood, they stood there the whole time. But I did appreciate how, with how eccentric the episode was and all that she was doing. And we were all watching, like, who the hell would stick around? I would have, I would have been dipped on that. But it just Man. showed how caring and loyal she was and how worried she was about her. And yep. there was more to her than just, you know, trying to get to the next best thing that she should stuck around. Yeah, I mean, you guys said it perfectly. She could have definitely, when she, when first off, she could have been like, oh, you don't know who I am when she's hauling that uh, meat shop. Like, <laughs> what do I know? Who's who? All right, you don't know me. Peace. Like the wig, not really. Uh, but it's for her to stick around, you guys said it perfectly. It, it kind of shows, again, goes back to the growth of season two, 2018, if we're playing in that narrative. And she's for, I mean, now, of course, she's, like B said, she has grown, she's mature, but I mean, she's still, I don't want to say she's chasing clout, but the fact that she is going out to Paris for six grand, yeah. it, it kind of plays in that same arena that she still is mm -hmm. searching for. Everyone has teach her own, right? There's no True. judgment here, but she still has, you know, she's still unique. I'll say that. Right, right, uh, right. But to go back to you guys' comments on the growth, whereas Van is still searching for she, who she is, Candace is at least there to be like, I'm going to be here for you. I'm going to make sure you're safe. I'm going to bring you back home because ultimately that's what that happened at the end of the day. So I do applaud bringing that character back. And I'm, I'm curious, do you guys think, Tyra, do you think, and, and Brandon, do you think we'll see Candace again in season four, just kind of being still that friend with uh, with uh, Van's character? I hope so. I think so. Yeah. yeah. And I would love to see, I can't remember the other two girls from Champagne mm -hmm. Poppy that was with her. I, I would love to see them come yeah. back too because they were there. I fun. loved them because they were there to show the non-growth. <laughs> <laughs> they were there a long time where I like, oh, yep. I'm, I'm fucking with the bread in her pocket. Like they were, yep. and, yeah. I, and I, I think that was to show the parallels in the growth. Because whereas, you know, she was like, oh, I'm above that. Like, I'm not worried about going to pee on someone. I'm worried about you and us getting you home. And yep. we see the friend like, all right, I'm here to do what I do. I'm here for the money. I'm taking yep. her spot. And we saw how envious they were in the beginning of the episode. Like, I wish somebody would fl fly me out to, you know, pee on right. them. You have it so good. And it was just not them, you know, going through with putting the claws over their face and everything it was just oh. the none the parallels of the growth that was happening to mm -hmm. them just being stifled and just being there eating a hand in a, will, in a, hey, man, good one. I see what you did there. See it would be a there. failure if Candace and them didn't come back. And see I would love to see. And and apparently, people in the I, I didn't look it up, but apparently, a lot of people were saying that um, um, Osha, I think was her name, was that's uh, not that it matters, but that's it's Darius's, I don't know, baby's mama in real life. I don't know. Did you guys hear that? Did you oh, guys? She hear is. That as well? no, that's no, right. yeah. She is actually, yeah. yes. So yes, I think that's, you know, kind of uh, all in the family. I, I don't know if they're still together or whatnot. Obviously, they're raising a kid together, but I think that's pretty mm -hmm. cool. So I would love to see her be ba brought back uh, and see what she can get into in a season four. But something I am disappointed in, guys, we got 209 people watching. The one that got oh, ninety three no, thumbs up. Ninety three. got ninety three. Can we? Can we not Listen, get a hundred thumbs up? Happen. Do we got to get the baguettes out? Do we I have mean, to yeah. get the baguettes? Listen, I, 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 we wanted to keep it non violent, but you know, Listen, come on, where, where, thumbs where up, thumbs up, where's, thumbs up where, party, oh. thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up. Definitely. Okay, yeah, we had 104 now. Okay, Here 114. There we go. Okay. <laughs> thank you, thank you. It, it pushes the video out. If y'all want people to see this. Uh, thumbs up the video. Uh, uh, people that YouTube says, "Oh, people are thumbing this video up. It must be good." So let's let's uh, promote it. So yeah, we're at 127 now. That's what's up. Nah, I appreciate it, man. You cool, see, cool, guys, cool. this is this is the, the thumbs up party. Let's you know, Van. I don't want a sick Van on you. Y'all see the the baguette there? <laughs> she, she she will use it. She will use it. So go ahead and use that baguette and smash that like button like uh, she did to Homeboy in this episode. But uh, like Baron has said, we got 212 people watching live. Again, like, share, leave your thoughts in the comments. And more importantly, you see Brandon, you see Tyra, check out their content. They are incredible content creators and even better people. So check them out. Uh, and, and let's get this train moving on to speaking a little bit more to Van. Now, you touched on it, uh, Tyra, regarding the look, the feel. And, and you know, I, I've seen Amelie to a certain extent. I never finished it. I saw it in college. I didn't finish it, unfortunately. I remember enjoying it and just mm -hmm. kind of touching on the narrative and correct me if I'm wrong. It's a story about a young lady who's kind of in self-isolation and she wants to implement her life to make people's lives better. Yeah. But Van, on the other hand, is a little bit of a different remix, remix on that narrative. So, <laughs> Tyra, if you want to kind of correlate and talking to Van and correlate that to Amelie and just kind of mm -hmm. connections with the film and what they were trying to give us in this uh, this episode. 
Well, I believe she is, I believe, because I, I, I'm with you with having seen it in such a long time, but she was a little bit of a recluse from a very mm. young age, and she always had an active imagination in creating her own world and everything else, and just having her own vibe, not worried about anything else. But once I think she turns 18 and she tries to venture out, even though it's um, really about a lot of escapism going on, she... Uh, feeds, you know, other people these things and she's like making their life just so amazing and making them see things in a whole new light. It's really great. And it's, it's visually like, oh my God, it's a beautiful movie. Like it's it's a lot going on, but it's, it's great to look at. And I thought, I thought this episode was like visually pleasing. Van looked totally different, but instead of Van, you know, projecting, you know, inspiration and great, beautiful things, it's like she's going around being a tyrant, but I still, <laughs> I, I still got, you know, the references of, you know, so uh, it's, it, you know, the escapism and she's going into her reality, but it's to make people better. It's bad escape, escapism, but her reality, she's like inflicting pain and she she's a whole thug this episode. I was yeah. like, what the hell's going on with Ben? But she, uh, it was, it was, uh, I think a lot to be said that her reality was so harsh. It wasn't, you know, some happy white picket pit situation. Right. She was going ham and we were, I was interested because I didn't get the, um, Teray or I didn't get the reference right away until I looked it up. So I was like, this package oh, yeah. must whoa, be really whoa, yeah. special. Mm -hmm. And this entire time you <laughs> knocking out teeth for meat. <laughs> Now, when we got to what the meat is and, you know, exactly the reference and why yeah. it would be a hand, that's different. But you were, like, going up for meat. <laughs> She's definitely, yeah, living a different lifestyle. And, Brandon, your, your thoughts and, again, the, uh, the the movie reference and just the idea, like Tyra was kind of mentioned, just the escapism. And and yeah. some people go to live a different life and, and yeah. maybe bring more happiness to people. But like uh, Tyra was saying, Van did the complete opposite. She was kind of... <laughs> ruining people's lives and and she was just a bull in a shining shop man yeah, she was like she was sprinkling some crack on like, a, yeah <laughs> Tyra, Tyra. Tyrone biggums man yeah she was she was you know she was wilding out in this one what, your Tyra, thoughts be on Tyra, Tyra, yeah. you're, you're hilarious um she is. i told you she was comedian guys I told you, the tour, yeah. the tour she, is coming she's she going gonna, on the she's Europe gonna, tour. Gonna, like you know she's gonna bring you out of you you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, they go yeah. sprinkle like you. It's yeah. like, yeah, she's sprinkling, like leaving, and she was taking such joy in it. So I think it just said a ball. lot about mm -hmm. where she was in her life and how she feels about herself that that would be her escape. Yep. <laughs> um, yeah, Todd was all the sprinkles, but I never heard of this movie before until I heard it in this show. I uh, mm -hmm. never heard of Amelie. I remember. When I was watching this the first time, I was like, Amelie, I know I'm gonna have to write that down. I know I'm gonna have to look it up. You know what I'm saying? And uh, yeah, so I had to look all this up. Tara is one of the, she's the first person that pointed out to me like, hey, Bree, it's a reference to this movie right here. Excuse me. And I, I do like the way they adapted Van's character, making her look like her with the mm -hmm. the uh, cut hair, the, the haircut, or there was a wig or not, I don't know. Also, um, you know, Van just happens to be a lighter skin complexion. And, you know, Amelie is a white woman, apparently, if that's her name. <laughs> and I'm seeing that this is a comedy romance, but it's also rated R. Yeah. Because when I first saw the when I first saw the poster on, like, you know, uh, social media, Elliot, your video and just across all these platforms, you know, I was like, OK, it may be good, but I wasn't really just that eager to see it. But now that I'm saying that this is rated R. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, this must be like serious, 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 mm -hmm. you know, and escape escapism is a real thing. Um, I've never seen it to this degree, but black people, to be honest with you, we do that the most out of everybody. You mm -hmm. know, we will disappear into any world if it don't have to deal with all the bullshit that we know is uh, always lurking in the shadows. You know what I'm saying? Uh, living over here. So, yeah. Um, I, yeah, I, the escapism aspect of it. Um, I mean, it was a very, it was very jarring, but it was alarming, and I, I'm glad that you know Donna rung that bell because um, yeah. it, it needed to be rang. And you know, delivery may not have been the best, uh, yeah. but that that's just my opinion. You know, so, yeah. you know, like I said, other people think that oh, it's brilliant, knocked it out the park. So yeah, but it it, it was cool at the very least. Yeah, and, and kind of speaking and, and going a little bit back into Van and, and Tyra, just your thoughts on a, a lot of questions too in the chat regarding timeline wise. Yeah. Now, 
she yeah. fast forward to the end. She said it's been some weeks since she's you know was in Atlanta and now she's in Paris. But then she mentions mm-hmm. an episode that she you know the baguette's been sitting out for six months. Uh, she's <laughs> on these cheap you know chic Paris magazines. That right. I don't think you do all that in a matter of weeks. So right. yeah, your thoughts, Tyra, on on timing and 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 all the different stuff. Do you feel like this mm-hmm. was in the same time period that Paperboy was there, or she was there like m- many months after they left? Your, your thoughts on this timeline that we got here in this episode? I completely left the timeline once. I saw the magazine and (laughs) I was like, I felt like it was more of the the Paperboy episode that we had not too long ago where there was so much going on and he passed, you know, he walked past himself. Mm -hmm. I felt like this was all like maybe she found Van. This was, you know, to be a graphic and be a reflection of how she feels. But I just felt, I was like, okay, none of this shit is happening. (laughs) I was like, none of this is actually happening. I think they're projecting. And just to, you know, drive it home. Of course, it's a it's a wonderful reference and how they tied it together with the actual movie and this adventure that we went on with Van. But I personally felt like I was like, none of this is happening. I feel like they're trying to drive it to us that she is, you know, lost. And maybe Candace did find her. But as far as I was mm-hmm. concerned, none of that happened. <laughs> none, none of that happened. Like, really, Van is the whole thing. And because it was like she had a, a boyfriend, a, a mm-hmm. sad man, and it, it was a whole it was nother life. <laughs> yeah. It yeah. was too much, and yet, you know, we still, because I think I looked at the, um, they do it so quickly when they show phones, but just the yes, reference I was trying of, to, yep. uh, you know, <laughs> when uh, Ern was texting her, it was still in the same vein of the, you know, when he woke up and she was gone. Mm-hmm. There, It was not anybody six months <laughs> to, for all of this to occur, so I just felt like they were trying to drive it home to us and make it interesting, but I mm-hmm. personally was like, okay, none of this is happening. <laughs> what about you, B? Do you think we were in a in a particular timeline as far as six weeks, six months, maybe a uh, year that she's been there? And I don't know. Well, what I we it were... was a couple of weeks. I couple was weeks. I just felt like you know it was a couple of weeks mm-hmm. because I I were uh, they were there you know long before she ever you know she arrived and it was a surprise. Right. But in the in the time pan, the time pan, <laughs> the time span of her getting with <clears throat> Earn and her kind mm-hmm. of going back and forth, falling in and out of his life and her whole escapade. You mean to tell me? Van has been off the grid a year and Van is just like, well, I'm going to do what I do. And Earth's like, well, I'm just going to keep texting her. Like, no, yeah. we would have put out an Amber Alert. Right. Or, the whole family's oh, coming to Paris. Person, as an intervention. Like, it, yeah. This, this wouldn't have flu- wouldn't have flu. So with the whole thing and, you know, her parents, you know, I, 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 don't, I don't, I just, with the flow of this episode, I threw all concepts of time out the window, personally. <laughs> What about you, B? What, what, what timeline were you working in, my friend? Yeah, that's what I'm saying, man. Uh, this was the worst part of the episode. It's like we was in a tornado. <laughs> None of this makes sense. I mean, bro, she had she knows all the street codes. You know what I'm saying? Like on mm-hmm. the, you know, like they calling her Tyre. How does she know so many people? She know the dude at the bakery. Yeah. <clears throat> she know the doorman. She done got beef with Emilio and packages. She, know she where knows to get the crack Alexander Skarsgård. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. She, she got a, she got a she got a, a keypad at the mansion at the end. She working in the kitchen. Yeah. I, I don't I don't understand this. The whole in the six months baguette thing is it, it, wild. You know she she's she's does she, she had to been over there for years mm. to know all all of this stuff. And so <laughs> even the transition at the end where she was screaming, talking about, "Where's Lottie? Where's Lottie?" The way it just cut to them on the bench was sloppy and, mm. and, and and very distorted mm. you know so i i don't know i don't i don't know it didn't uh, it, it, i, I, I uh, thought they snapped back because once we did the words after that you saw that it was van and the wig you know was, was no longer there the was out, yeah. and i don't even think that they even mentioned in you know, a reference like oh you guys are cooking and eating ham. like it was yeah, it was I, just, I, yeah. I thought it was just like a wake-up call for van and getting her out of her own headspace and wherever she was you know the depression her just feeling disjointed because yeah. she didn't get you know the <clears throat> opportunities that she thought she would and she's just lost mm. I, I i didn't think any of that that happened like no not at all even with the visual cues i wrote it down when they had the shot of her her phone mm-hmm. um iron had uh 18 notifications the mom had 21 yeah um mm-hmm. even if that was a few days there would mm-hmm. be more notifications than that so that just yeah just really just, listen guys me. this is why i have these two on the panel my, my man got notes he <laughs> got his his notepad tyra's looking at the phones this is why we're here to have these discussions and and this is to that point i think for me my timeline thing was when we saw the paperboy poster in the background uh mm-hmm. that they were still in europe uh yes. that she was just off because i think the last time she was actually 
scene with them was obviously earned when you, like you mentioned, time when she left. Uh, you know, I don't re recall what day because I think when they were on tour, I want to say it was December because I can't remember. It was some episode they we saw that they were on tour in December, and then at the end of this episode, did you travel in May? So we're assuming that they've been six. That's you know five six months window between episodes two to episode uh, nine. But to you guys' point. For six months, and honestly, probably two months, really, of her being by herself, to be where she's at, to know the people she knows, Alex got a scars guard. That's a lot of stuff to be done in that, in that small time frame. But I will say, as far as her knowing certain things, as we all know, she is German. She tra she said in this episode she traveled a lot when she was a kid, so she might have some connects or friends or knows the the, the natives and knows some of the lingo because she has traveled there when she was a kid. But I think being you probably can relate to this entire. I don't know if you're a big MCU fan, but I was I was just getting Moon Knight vibes. I'm like, this is Stephen Grant and uh, you know Mark Spector. You know she snaps out, she blacks out. She even says she blacked out on the on the plane uh, when mm -hmm. she traveled there. So I don't know. I was thinking, and I th I thought that we were going to get like a DID situation that she's having like a, a split personality disorder mm -hmm. uh, that they might explore in season four that she's uh, you know has a dis disorder, but. Yeah, it was all over the place. Yeah. I, that would be I just do the time. Yeah, that would have been great. I thought yeah. at, in the end that we would get like maybe you know she was having an out of body experience, and when yeah. she was you know here beating someone with a baguette, actually Candace was talking to her here just to show just how you know disjointed she was as a person. But we did not. It was just like cut. I was like, oh, so y'all can't sit and tell me that this was actually happening because it couldn't have but i yeah that's that's the you know the amazingnessness of atlanta no answers y'all don't need answers no answers just it's, it. it's just right just watch it and ask questions <laughs> later that's definitely the approach here but getting into i guess our first uh erin as uh you know uh she calls it yo you want to come with me i got a couple of errands to run alexander skarsgård b um, uh, are you a fan of this actor and were you surprised to see him in this episode? You know, we got a, a Liam Neeson cameo earlier on this season and now we got uh, Alexander Skarsgård. Listen to Ashanti and, and wanted to get butt naked in front of these uh, his, his new guests. I am embarrassed to say that I didn't even recognize him at first. Um, and you know, until Candace uh, mentions his name, yeah, you know, but uh, it's it's interesting, man. Uh, just some of the roles. Uh, people take, you know, uh, must you know, be a fan of the show. Yeah, because, yeah. um, you know, I mean, he presented himself in a way that some people <laughs> may not want to present himself, you know, get, kind of getting emasculated and spit on. And, yeah, you know, he's he's struggle masturbating. No, no pun intended, Tyra, but he's <laughs> having a hard time masturbating in the bathroom. <laughs> and, you know, um, so it, it was weird. Um, it was it was funny. It was it was entertaining. It was it was weird. It was a lot of stuff, you know, so. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I'm I barely recognized my first man, <laughs> and I saw your video. He was like, he was in all these, and I was like, oh snap! Yeah, I'm a fan, I'm a fan of Alex. Yeah, from from True Blood to yeah. even most yeah. recently on Secession, and then I'm a big, yeah. you know, we we love movies. B, so I, you know, The Northman. I don't know if you got right. a chance to see, see that. So I was Not like, yet, as soon as I heard his voice, I'm like, that's Alex yes. yeah. yeah. uh, But like I said. True Blood. That's when I. That's when I was a big yes. fan of his. I love it. Tyra. Are you a True Blood fan? I am a Snook True it. Blood fan Snook through it. and through. So to see him in that weird space, and we know that he gets it in on True Blood. So I was oh, like, yeah. this is this is not. This is Eric. He was Eric Northman in his episode. Essentially, yeah, that's what he was. Yeah. This is not it, but yeah, it was. Uh, it was. It was. It was jarring. I was like, oh, it's not some random. <laughs> yeah. It's. I was like, oh, and then he, he's in the, the thong and filling his oats with the. Oh man, he was living his best life. Yeah, everybody was just get naked and so he's like uh like no we're, we're not we're not. we're not but you can go ahead and do it <laughs> but it's just i was like is this a part of um i was like literally thinking hard did uh did van ever say you know she was a fan of true blood or alexander skarsgård is this a part yeah. of her you know active imagination and her escapism that mm -hmm. she loved him in a secret life is she a fan like i was like all over because i was like why is he here yeah. And he's being so weird, as you know, be said, like struggle masturbation. <laughs> but I took his whole energy in the episode and just the uh the peeing reference and just him because she, you know, he got aroused and even wanted to masturbate because she spit in his face. Mm -hmm. And she was like, Oh no, he, he loves this. These are yeah. our encounters. I get him in trouble. And just um just how the sadistic things that you know somebody could be interested in and right. what they were there for and what they were engrossing in versus once they snap back into reality it's just like no we're better than this we don't need to be immersed <laughs> in this in this kind of thing yeah. but 
Yeah, I just I tied him into the it's whole reference. <laughs> I mean, you you said it perfectly. This episode could have been called Kinks because honestly, yeah. from the peen reference to him dancing and cocaine and all this stuff, so spit in the face and obviously eating hands. This episode has like an idea of like, I guess, judgment uh, in regards lot, to yeah. how, and this goes back to the narrative of this season, being in a foreign area, an unfamiliar area, different yeah. natives, different customs. This is all weird to us, but to Alex, this is like this party time. This is a Tuesday afternoon. Let's yeah. have some coke and dance around. So I think that that definitely <laughs> ties into just the shocking nature. Like this is stuff I don't, you know, I don't in, in take in these activities. Uh, I don't know if you guys in the, in the chat does, but that's again, I think it speaks to just the awkwardness and the weirdness of all this stuff going on uh, yeah. that we see in this episode. But uh, any last thoughts? But we'll we, we'll talk about Alice a little bit later. But any <laughs> any any other last thoughts on this uh, this moment here with them uh, dropping not. off this game? <laughs> mm -mm, mm -mm. <laughs> no. It's and going back to what you said, B. As far as like an actor, kind of uh, like I thought Liam Neeson and his whole comments of just like his racist remarks that he made years ago. Yeah, and just like him putting himself on there, being like, you know, black people and white people were always the enemies. It is very interesting that these actors are, I guess, willing enough to to poke willing fun to of themselves this. and put themselves mm -hmm. on screen. It kind of speaks to their, uh, you know, their ego or lack of. They just want to have fun and just be yeah, a part man. of this uh, the show. I'm still tripping on what he said in this episode, though. Liam Neeson, that was crazy. Oh yeah, he just, yeah. Like, the, the end talking about it don't matter if I, it's because I'm yeah. white. I don't got to learn nothing if I don't want to. So I'm like, God. Yeah. Hey, and, and, and when when Taken 17 comes out, people will still be mm -hmm. at the line and that's watching the thing that. About yeah. The cancel, like what's cancel culture? Cancel culture. You're still culture, gonna exactly. come out. You're still gonna support me. And it, yeah, where well, was the lie? There was that's no crazy. lie. Here. Exactly. These two cameos this season. I'm just I'm very interested to see who they bring for season four. Uh, mm -hmm. I would love for, and it doesn't have to be a cameo every, every episode. Like a Marvel movie, but I would love to see who they were able to <laughs> to rally up for a season four. That would be pretty pretty dope. Uh, but transitioning over to the hands, you know, she gets the keys. Oh. She goes to Cabrini Green. The um, <laughs> the whole Candyman <laughs> reference. We get Fetty Wap when this whole crew and gang. But just to touch on this whole theme of uh, Tarahe, I know Brandon, you looked it up, and Tyrese, you looked it up as well. Mm -hmm. That is a messed up story. That we've yeah. we all researched in the 1700s for you all that aren't too familiar with this individual. Bro, yes, that is the is understatement real. of the century, you know. <laughs> B, when I and I looked, I read it first, and then I went on YouTube and watched some videos because I'm a, I'm a visual learner too. So when I was seeing people explaining, <laughs> the man was he ate everything, guys. Yeah. From uh, he was a street performer from eating, you know, uh, uh cats, human flesh, <laughs> he, a baby. Uh, there is a story where he went to the army and he was at a hospital and a 14 month baby went missing and yeah. it was assumed that he ate this baby. Ate baby. Uh, hence why they say when, when they was calling her Tara, Tara Hayes, he was like, he's the, the guy that ate the baby. So this is not a folk tale. This is someone that is in real life, which uh, Tyra, your thoughts on this, uh, this whole narrative. And I'm going to bring up a comment that someone left in my comment section on what they thought that that ties, how it ties to this episode. But what did you think Tara and, and Van kind of coexist in this narrative what was your connective ties i had no freaking clue <laughs> i was all i got the amelie reference right away but when we got oh. into that and him just uh i was like maybe you know it's the never being satisfied he had an insatiable appetite and it was just you know her just you know not being satisfied with anything in her life and what was going on i was having a really hard time trying to tie that together i got it. i'm glad i got it because if you didn't then you wouldn't even know like okay it's not even meat these are hands so you wouldn't make that connection but i i just i didn't know i had a very the damnedest time i was like maybe this is just her insatiable appetite of not being satisfied with what's going on in her life i have no clue <laughs> B, same question for you, man. You're, uh, you know, I know you did the research on it too. What did you ultimately take away from what they were trying to say with the title and how that ties into Van's story? Yeah, uh, well said, Tyra. I was kind of thinking that the, um, the, I don't know if it was a restaurant or the house that they was eating the hands at, you know, like the host, like were they descendants of Tyra or something? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, were, were the, right, were those right. those uh, passed down kids, like they're, they're carrying on the tradition or something like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, we just didn't, uh, you know, we didn't get to see the whole thing pop off because the characters that we were following following left the party because uh, mm -hmm. it was discussed. I don't know, that came to mind, but I still don't, it just did, that's, it still doesn't click to me why they was calling Van that. Mm -hmm. um, because, you know, Van never ate hands or babies or anything or did she of, you know? i don't know what she's doing on her free time right so i don't know she was at the meat store when we first saw her 
Mm-hmm. I thought they were calling episode. her that because it was like, oh, we know how she gets. We don't have we don't have her, her packages. She about to go off because she just mm-hmm. this is, mm-hmm. you know, her expectations because she is so insatiable for it. And if she doesn't, she's go, she's going to go up and be upset and beat people with some old decrepit <laughs> baguette. Like we know she's about that. Like she's she's insatiable for it. It's necessary. If you don't yep. you don't have my product, it's going down. It's going like, down. So yep. that's why it was they, they referenced that. But just for that to even correlate with her escape, I had no clue. <laughs> yeah, and, and I, this was the uh let me bring it up here. This was a uh, shout out to uh what was this uh Craig here. So this was a comment that he left on my video. And, and Tyra, I think you tied to this too, just kind of the correlation of how he ate, ate and it was unfulfilled and how that connects to her life, and she's kind of unfulfilled this life, and she's willing to, you know, as we know that Tyrate ate everything and yeah. we're seeing her doing wild things that it, it might have some connective tissues there. So I definitely think there might be some correlation with the just being unfulfilled, okay, uh, which I think. I just... <laughs> <laughs> so I definitely think there's definitely some correlation there. Um, but going back, I definitely I saw I, I meant, uh, what was it? Brooks, my apologies. She left a super chat earlier in the uh, in the stream. I just wanted to give her a quick shout out. Let me see if I can find it here. But pivoting over into getting these hands to now, as you all mentioned, the baguette. B, have you ever seen someone get beat up by a piece of bread before uh, in in that matter without it breaking, uh, without her immediately hitting him? Your thoughts on this whole thing was vibranium. Uh, (laughs) No, I've never seen that before. Uh, I knew it would break. I was scared. I was like, is she really about to kill him over, um, uh, you know, whatever this package is? And Everybody just standing around, and apparently this has happened before, mm-hmm. because the I forgot the was it what, the, what was his name Mark Marcel Sullivan. yeah we said no, not again what what yeah. no Mar- Marcel was the well maybe it was Marcel um uh but the the guy at the door as soon as she pulled the bag out you know he's like okay oh, everybody uh, leave uh, Carlos yeah yeah name. Carlos yeah he was yeah. like everybody leave get out of here yep. you know it's about to <laughs> go, we go again yep. how many times has she done this before so uh that that was that was crazy. Uh, mm-hmm. I mean, that's all I got to say about that. You know, Tyra, your thoughts on the lightsaber baguette going yeah. going ham? I was like, damn! I expected him to have some missing teeth once she once they pivot down to him. <laughs> well, it you. looked really brutal and all this like aggression that she had. I was like, damn! What is the? Because at that point we didn't know what it was. Right. I was like sitting. There, I was like, oh my god! She did sprinkle some crack on that bed. Is Ben <laughs> getting drugs? <laughs> what is going on? What is she trying to get? And the fact that it was meat, I was like, well, damn! All of this for a steak, you know? I yep. didn't know what it was. But it was, I was like really shocked. I thought we were about to venture off into some murder, death, kill territory. We were about to go real deep into this episode, but mm-hmm. it, was, it was very shocking. But we <laughs> knew that, okay, yeah, clearly Van means business. But I remembered um, just now with B saying, like, you remember Candace, she left and she wasn't there. She wasn't supportive. Candace said, forget y'all, I'm going. Yeah. In that moment, and the gang rolled up, Van <laughs> ran the fuck off. <laughs> Ben ran off and left the girls there. It's like, you brought us here. Why would right. you leave us here? But it's just showing just how far gone Van is at the moment. What kind Thanks. of underground crime circuit is going around too while uh, they're severing and collecting hands? I mean, this it's is... A, it's a, hey, B, it's a wild world out there. It's a wild world. And, and this brings me, uh, you know, there's so many horror films that tackle just kind of different uh, stuff that happens over... Like, I remember watching Hostel, you know, in the yeah. early 2000s and that whole selling organs and selling people's legs Legs, feet, heads, yeah. hearts, it made other me parts. Think of the fr- the newer film, Fresh on Hulu. Fresh, it which is a good film. Yep. Think about that one. Yes, one hundred percent. Have you seen? Well, B, I know you're not the biggest like horror fan. Have mm. you seen Fresh? I have not. It's have uh, not. <laughs> let's just say you got to have the the stomach for it. I'll yeah, just say I, that. I, I, I'll just yeah. say that. <laughs> but this was a super chat I was referring to. Shout out to Brooks here. Unless someone ate your hands, <laughs> give a thumbs up. <laughs> Very yeah. good use of a joke there, Brooks. Th- shout out to you for the super chat. And like she said, yes, we're we're uh, almost an hour and a half in, 217 people watching live. Uh, and again, we appreciate you all joining us on today's discussion. And let's keep the conversation flowing. We so, got 171 thumbs up. Can we get to 200? Can, can we, we do it, get folks? to 200, can we, can y'all? We do it. 
Can that we do it? Awesome. Let's, let's do it. That let's would be awesome. Uh, but switching into our 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 last stop here, and and Tyra, now we're at the the hands party. Uh, and I know we were talking about house party last week on Brandon's channel, but now it's a whole new different type of party that we got here. Um, we're at the party, and Candace is just continuously getting ducked by Van. Like she just wants to talk to her, but every time she tries to talk to her, she gets interrupted. This time is Alexander talking about he almost locked the lost the baby shark film, uh, which. <laughs> Uh, hey, let's see that Baby Shark movie, uh, 2023. Uh, but he almost lost it. Don't do it again. And Brandon mentioned he goes to the bathroom. And that was a kink, like being embarrassed in front of people that he went to the bathroom. And that was something that uh, got him, uh, you know, in a certain mindset. But we transitioned to seeing her finally getting to talk to Van. And Van points out her kinks. Like, wait, you're judging me, but you're here in Paris. for <laughs> what, what are you doing here again, Candace? Uh, your thoughts, Tyra, on, on kind of the pushback that uh, she gives her. Because it, to be true, I mean, yeah, you're here doing something pretty unordinary yourself. And you're here judging yeah. me. Your thoughts on Van maybe uh, coming and, and clapping back at her. I think it was not even just that, but just like, but girl, we, we know who I am. You know, I left you at the party. We know my agenda and who I am. And I know you as my friend this is not you and just to show just how van was and she just equated to, oh you're you're jealous that it's i'm having my moment and it's not about you and it's just like oh mm -hmm. no absolutely not it's not that i'm actually concerned with for you you're not having a moment you have a fake french accent and a whole <laughs> boyfriend and you said you know i'll just leave the kids and the the i'll just fly a lot of, to eat hands you're gonna bring her here to eat hands like what what are, <laughs> what are you doing but I, it was just like, I was like, oh my God, Van is really, like, really gone. And just, I knew she was gone at the, you know, super play, ho ho. She was like, I was like, what the hell is going on? <laughs> really, man? Like, it was it was just out of there. And, you know, once she broke it, we, we knew, you know, where she was when she dropped that accent and took that wig off. Like, what am mm -hmm. I doing? I, am I going to bring Lottie here to eat hands? I can't bring yeah. Lottie here to eat hands. I need to get myself together and go home. But uh, yeah, I it, it just it just showed like she was you know flip flopping where it's well no it's about me now and because I she feels like she hasn't had her moment and I think right. that that's why she's doing the um I think I discussed it with with B in one of those episodes because he was like why is she treating Earn like this and I had mm -hmm. to tell me you have to remember. Ern had his moments where, you know, he was, you know, having to discover himself and get himself together. Mm -hmm. And he was able to, to kind of, you know, go off and do and be to a, get to where he is now, to where they are in Amsterdam and they do, you know, they're, they're touring. But it wasn't always that. And she was left to kind of be that upstanding parent and be the yep. responsible all the time. So now she kind of feels like, oh, this is my moment. It's like, y'all can't take, yeah. you're blowing up my phone. Mm -hmm. I can go off. And it's like, you're you're not being responsible it's like well earned you weren't either like yeah but we're not used to this from you van you're right. you're the responsible one you know you're the, you're the teacher the most irresponsible thing i think we've ever seen her do is when she tried to you know fake that pee situation oh, oh, that episode <laughs> you know, outside of that yeah. she is very you know one note we don't we don't we don't expect for her to steer so the fact that she did and it went this far it just shows us just how bad she's doing as a person yeah, well said. I mean, even in this season, she says she tried to get a job, couldn't get, and we don't know. I guess financially speaking, we don't know. Yeah. Is, does she ever get a job after you know losing her job to the drug test situation? So, yeah, she's she's in she's she has a job now. She's frying hands. Uh, but <laughs> be your thoughts on this conversation between Candace and Van, and just kind of Van calling her out, or maybe her 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 hypocrisy going on right now, and just your thoughts on the conversation. Uh, my, my opinion changes on this every time I hear a different perspective from a woman and now it's Tyra, uh, <laughs> but, but well, well said, um, you know, I love that Candace is calling her out and I don't uh, blame uh, Van for clapping back, but it's completely unwarranted, you know, kind of like what you said, Elliot, you know, we know who Candace is, you know, what she's about, but Van, this is a complete 180, you know, wormhole jump from anything we've ever seen before. This don't make no damn sense, you know. Mm -hmm. I may be over here selling piss, but I got my ducks in the road. You know, you've abandoned right. your child, per se, and yeah. don't nobody know what's going on. Um, I mean, you're committing assault in a foreign land. You're stealing. You know, what if you end up in jail, you know, and uh, who's going to bail you out? I mean, is it a coincidence that you ran into Earn and them in Amsterdam, or did you follow them? I, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> that, that's still uh, on the table. Um, but I, I, I heard from a lot of people, uh, in my comment section about this. Uh, well, no, I, I think I answered your question. I don't want to jump too far ahead, but ahead, well, you know, and, and let me ask you this too, Tara. 
I don't, I, I know um, the perception of society and, you know, we hear this said a lot and I know I've said it a strong black woman, strong black yeah. woman. And I know I does a snippet on social media of uh, Taraji P. Henson saying that we need to chill out with that, you know, because mm -hmm. it makes black women seem like they're immortal. You know, yeah. we all know back from decades ago and during slavery that, you know, mm -hmm. oh, you know, black women don't yeah. feel pain doing, you know, I mean, we, we, we know all of that. And so to to hear the, a, lot, a lot of people, uh, women were in my um, comment section <clears throat> saying that, you know, like, you know, black women are perceived to, mm -hmm. you know, be these uh, impenetrable, unstoppable forces. And, you know, we have breakdown moments. And I've never seen it like this before to where somebody just completely, you know, has a mental episode and just clocks out into somebody else. How, how, does that happen often, Cairo? I mean, do you know? I, I mean, I know black women are frustrated and it's like, ah, mm -hmm. you know, and there's a narrative that it's like, you know, uh, men can abandon their ch yeah. children and it'd be a okay, which I don't agree yeah. with at all. I despise <laughs> that. But women, don't, I, I, I remember about 15 years ago, just some shoddy I met parking lot pimping or whatever. One of the first times we kicked it, you know, she, you know, she was just mentioning that. And it always just stood out to me. So, um, well, I know all this is going on, or it has gone on. It's never been exposed to me in this way. Yeah. Um, I I still think you know, and I I don't mean to judge her, or or demean her. I still think uh, I still think it was her behavior was irresponsible as far as her lack of communication, you know. Mm -hmm. But I still do sympathize with her as well. Yeah. Um, you know, so I'm sorry <laughs> if I'm I, if I'm you know off. <laughs> No, this is this is actually a question I have for you all. Is just yeah. that to your point, it's that responsibility that women have the burden of like having to hold the fort yeah. down. Van, I mean, Ern's out, and I mean, of course, he's doing work, you know, yeah. to support his family, but that, he's out in Europe for six months. Do you have months. kids, Elliot? That, uh, I don't. I well, I mean, if you ask Thor, my dog, he he will tell you <laughs> differently. But no, I don't have human. Well, you know, I have. I'm a mom. I have two children. Yeah. And there is that that burden to if you I mean, if you're not, of course, you know, you want to have that white picket fence and that happily married situation. But a lot of us don't. And a lot of us are single parents or end up single parents. And probably, you know, 98 percent of the time it's left up to the mom to be the more responsible one. And, you know, the other parent or, you know, whatever, they get to kind of go off and be off the grid and do what they need to do to get themselves together. And you're left to be the responsible, the parent, the bear of everything. And at any instance where you, you know, veer off from that, it's, oh, my God, you know, what, what are you what are you doing? And yeah. it's like, well, you know, damn, you know, sometimes I may just. You don't you're not fortunate enough to have a moment to just veer off and do anything because it's just looked at like you're a disappointment. You're failing as a, you know, as a mother or as a parent in general, where it is, you know, from a different perspective where it may be a man not saying that all fathers in one way. It'll be like, well, you know, well, you know, he he needed time. You know, he's getting himself together. He's he was an emotional wreck. He's not ready, you know, to maybe be that parent, that father figure just now. You know, he, he got himself. To, but, you know, you don't you don't you're, you're not fortunate enough to have that. So in the moment that I think it kind of just bared on her, because I think even from that very, very last episode uh, of with Erin just leaving and she was just kind of left with Lottie. At that moment, I remember her, I haven't seen it in a while, of course, but her face just being like, wow. So, you know, and it's like, oh, you're leaving. So the little, you know, maybe assistant that I did have for, you know, hey, you know, hey, you go pick up the baby, you you know, the whole daycare situation or the, the cushion that I did have of you being here and being that secondary parent, even though I was the sole one, that's gone. And not only that, I've, you know, made a way for you to venture off. You've gotten yourself together enough to go off and do this. But now I'm still left to just be, I think like the pressure just kind of got to her and we see, we see what happened. We see what could happen. Now, of course, this is, you know, a whole, this is times 20 to the extreme, of, what, you yeah. know, of what it could be. It's extreme. Yeah. <laughs> but I think it, it just says a lot to, you know, she should be afforded a moment to, you know, have a breakdown or not be okay. It's okay for women to not be okay and deal, everybody deals with stuff different, but don't, you know, reflect to equate that instantly. Oh, you're being irresponsible. You're being a bad parent. What are you doing? Yeah. It's like, well, yeah, I, I know what I'm supposed to be doing, but at this moment, I'm not okay. And I should be afforded to be that because when we're not, we end up with Van-esque situations because we are never, you know, uh, afforded that in the first place. So, so it is okay not to be okay. You, yeah. you know, you, yeah. you're, you're human beings, mm -hmm. you know, I, I get it. 
you know, I, I've had my low points in life. You know, we all have. And I know that it's 10 times worse for you guys. But help me out with this, uh, because prior to watching season three, I re I revisited season two, mm -hmm. watched it from the beginning. But I did not go back and check out season one. So mm -hmm. I know you did, Elliot. I'm not sure mm -hmm. if you did, Tara, how big of a refresher it is. Going all the way back to the, the very first season one, season season one, episode one. Was there ever a time where Van reached out and expressed how she actually felt to Earn about the situation and lack of his support, if they're of, like, hey, I need some help? Because uh, that was my thing. Again, it is okay not to be okay. I'm not judging Van, you know, for her breakdown. Uh, mm -hmm. that, that, that's just evil, in my opinion. Uh, but I was still just like, you know, frustrated. It's like, man, like, I understand you having a breakdown, but shit, say something, you know? And I, I just don't know if she ever did. So I, that's, mm -hmm. why I'm, that's why I'm asking right now. Cause, cause I, 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 people, a few people in my comments, I was like, hold on B, you know, I, I hear you here and here, or I hear you wrong, my brother, <laughs> you know? And it was, just, it was the same topic. So yeah, he, he, help me out with that. Cause, uh, I'm, I'm still trying to connect I mean, all the dots they had that gray area i know when it was like that you know that what are we space but i think outside of that she didn't express like i'm you know i'm i think somebody said black women are always drowning, drowning. in the uh, yeah. you know like I'm, I'm drowning as a woman or as a person or as a mom it yep. was just more so like oh my god van like i, I just Earn, I wish you could, you know, do a little bit more, you know, maybe help me a little bit more financially. Like, I can never depend on you. You were supposed to get her. You were late. You were, there is, you know, a little, uh, you know, back and forth and exchanges outside of their relationship, you know, because a lot of that is their relationship or lack thereof. But there are moments where she uh, expresses that she wants him to be more present as a father and just as yep. a parent in general and not just, you know, running around. I think, I think that's when he was um, sleeping in the, the story the story, the story area, yeah that's the season one bad. ended that way yeah and i think it was both ways because he didn't you know really express you know his situation a whole lot it's just you yeah. know a lack of communication i think on both parts because yep, nobody right. knew it was just like oh he's having a hard time well what how are you having a hard time i need help i need this i need that meanwhile yep. he's struggling financially and he's living in the storage unit so and, and i remember in season two um they had the the i guess the german influenced episode where they yeah, the was at Helen some type episode. of pub Yep. Yeah. And they went over and tried to play ping pong. And, you know, he, he was being an asshole in that episode. <laughs> he didn't but really I know spend time with her and do the things yeah, that she liked. Yeah. He, he was kind of being an a-hole. And I remember that she expressed how she felt about a relationship, <laughs> yeah. but not as a parent. Because I just know, I'm just saying, Ty, if, I'm, if I happen to be the father of your children or our children and you're suicidal and you don't tell me that, I'm going to be like, I'm going to be angry. Mm -hmm. I, you know, because I'm, I mean, I mean, I can't speak for all male, but I'm gonna stop everything I'm doing. You know what I'm saying? If you close your eyes and you end up on the other side of the road, let, mm -hmm. other side of the road, let me know so I can be like, okay, we need to stop this. I need to, you know, we can't have this well, <laughs> right now. I'm point. coming home, baby. You know, so. <laughs> I think that's the point of the episode because rarely, and I can speak just for myself, just as a person, when you are having those moments, rarely do you express them to other people. You, you know, yep. you take them inwards because you know, you know, I, you know, I don't want to be a burden. I don't want to, yep. you know, it's, it's private, you know, and then there's that, that stigma, of course, with her being responsible. I don't know how are people going to, you know, view me as a person that, you know, I'm not okay. That's, mm -hmm. and that's, and I think that's the point of, you know, just Candace or just people do wellness checks. Like, don't just take, cause Candace could have left, you know, yep. very early on in the episode. It's like, you know, make sure you're concerned and you're checking in your, on your people. Cause you never know what they're, they're dealing with. You know, she's in Paris and, you know, it's supposed to be living her best life. <clears throat> Meanwhile, she's She's having a freaking nervous breakdown and she's not okay. So, cause I don't, I can't think of many people who just like, oh, you know, hey, I was, it's always after the fact, like, I'm sorry, I was that way. I was going yep. through something, you know, internally and personally, that's why it was this. But in the moment, I cannot remember, you know, really many people just saying anything in that moment. I got you. Listen, you guys, this is why I'm so happy you guys are here. And it, just to kind of address, because you guys said all the, the main points I have, but one thing that you mentioned, uh, Tyron, someone mentioned in the comments about black women drowning and just kind of always feeling under pressure and underwater. I think it's not a coincidence that they were talking near a body of water uh, when she was having that expression, when she was telling her her thoughts and ties back to episode one with White Earn, who we'll talk about, talking about this like <laughs> feeling like you're being pulled down in water. So I think there are some correlations with the first episode and tying it back to this end episode. 
But to you, to your point, Tyra, I think there was never expressly, and also I mentioned at the beginning of the stream, we will be doing a, a weekly watch party, kind of revisiting all the seasons leading up to season four. But I'm very excited to revisit season one. But from what I remember, remember to your question, Brandon, I don't think Van expressly said to Earn, you need to step up as a father. But I think he she said it without saying it. So we saw mm-hmm. him working at the airport and then, OK, I need to go ahead. And, and my, my cousin's making, you know, he's a paper boy. So yeah, go ahead, B. I just want to reiterate. A woman yep. shall not have to tell a man that you need exactly. to step as a father. I just want to make it. Yep. That's paramount. That's the foundation. Yep. Uh, you're just supposed to do that automatic. So yep. I just want to make sure. I can't that's remember. Understood. There was a, it, I think it was in the first episode. There was something where she didn't say it, but he kind of got the idea because that's when he heard that Paperboy was on the radio and like, let me try to, you know, try yeah. to squeeze my way in, help my cousin yeah. out, but at the same time, help my family out. So I think uh, that was his way. But to Tyra's point, he had to find his way. Like he was out. Earn was doing some, you know, just kind of. Mm-hmm wandering around in life and not really being as supportive as he can so he had that moment to kind of be discover who he is and at that point he's now earned making money he's on tour this that and the other so van to you guys' point she never got that moment now this was extreme uh to get her (laughs) moment but she this is her moment everyone has their own expressions and the ways they do go about it uh but yeah go ahead b i was just gonna say i also like a woman that's not too afraid to communicate that way as well communication you know, be i that, think is the that, big thing i, I like a woman that's gonna hold a little fire up under my ass you know what i'm saying even if i do slip up, i shouldn't be slipping up but if and if i do slip up in whatever yeah. aspect in life in the relationship you know what i'm saying I, I want a woman to tell me like hey nigga, you know you need to get it together you, get you know together. <laughs> I, I had a homeboy man he i think he's an idiot because he didn't work it out with this girl but his only complaint was b she talked disrespectful to me and yeah. that uh, she, she was saying nigga you ain't shit you ain't shit and i'm like okay you know a woman should never just have that tone but it was true though. He it's wasn't true. Really, yeah. He wasn't shit. I'm like yep. yeah. a woman is not gonna say that unless you give her a reason to, you know what I'm saying? And he didn't want to hear that. And a lot and not a lot of guys, but some guys you know, that's the case. But I'm just saying, don't give the person a reason to even feel that way. She can probably communicate better, but don't even put her in a position to. Sorry. Hey, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll no need to apologize. Jamie, no. Listen, Paul ladies, y'all taking beach. notes at home? I mean, yeah, Brandon, he's telling he y'all what he's looking burgers. for. Tell me when I'm messing up, you know. <laughs> if you depressed, let's have it. So, ladies, take notes. An attitude, <laughs> a, a woman having an <laughs> attitude is you. good if it's warranted, you know, <laughs> if it's if it's warranted. That's the that's the there you thing, go. There's you know. the there's the way into Brandon's hearts, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Yes. That is the way into his heart. Uh, <laughs> but listen, this is and again, I don't know if this this conversation is maybe making people at home or even Brandon and Tyra maybe uh, maybe appreciate the episode more because this is why I want to have this conversation. There's so many layers. That yeah, we I do, bro. Down I honestly do, bro. I honestly uh, do. <laughs> to really kind of recalibrate it all. Which uh, like, shout out to L. Yeah. With the A, uh, <laughs> shout out to A there. Shout out to you, L, with the 499 super chat. And then everyone at home, if you guys have any uh, pertinent questions, I'm gonna try to get to the super chats as awesome as i can but appreciate your l for the super chat there but bro, that, that's the yeah. brilliance of the episode man it inspires us to have these conversations there and it is. more more is revealed so it's, i it guess is. This, it's working it's working there it is this is this is why we're here to have these these therapy conversations but getting into it again just the funniness of the moment um um her friends realize that they're eating hands and you know alexander <laughs> oh where are these little hands um <laughs> I would have like once that towel would have came out, I would have I would have threw up instantly yeah. right then and there. I would have just been like smacking everyone in the face with all the hands. Um, Tyra, oh. if you would have saw that she was eating hands, first your reaction? Of all, you couldn't put that. that well, I would say first, yeah, I'm not just eating face. anything. In the first place, like, why are you trying to keep me from seeing what I'm eating? It's like, oh, it's a delicacy. It's a delicacy. No, no, this is, nah. you know, this is and I and it was. Nah. And it wasn't even for the other people eating. It wasn't even like, oh, we don't want to see. It was like this was a part of like it felt like some ritual or something. I was like, what is going on? This is, this is not. I am not vibing with this. But mm-hmm. it, was, it was. I don't know. I took it as you know, oh. open your eyes, or you could be eating hands too. Oh. Don't <laughs> don't allow anyone to don't shield ever. from the bigger things that are going on here. Ever, They're living ever. their best life. Meanwhile, you're trying to go and okay, like they've been along for the ride the whole episode, yep. and y'all yep. wind up eating hands because y'all were along for the ride stop being yeah. along for the ride and watch your back <laughs> now brandy them, them. You're, you're traveling to paris man you're out with some friends and like hey this is custom man you got to put this towel over here to really take in this uh this experience are you doing that beer you're like no nah, I'm, I'm is, putting holes in my <laughs> I can yeah, see you know what i'm saying going on. yeah okay, okay okay yeah no that's um <laughs> i can't see shit out of this <laughs> 
that would have been a perfect time to been to use. I got to go to the bathroom. Excuse, yeah. you know, yep. what I'm saying like I got to go to the restroom. I haven't washed my hands yet. You know, right. yeah, no pun yeah, intended. Yeah, I'm gonna go yeah, wash. Yeah, yeah. yeah uh, <laughs> no, there's no way in hell. And that they were enjoying it before but, they realized. Oh, what it was. they ate a couple. They ate a whole finger. I think they had a whole yeah. finger. Hey, that that thing bred like, it up yeah, and fired. Other customs, yeah. you you never know what you know. People people's customs may not be, be your own, so you need to be aware when you're flying and going over, hanging out with uh, Alexander Skarsgård. Right. <laughs> like, yeah. no. And and just real quick, guys, we got 191 thumbs up. Come on, with that 200. We need nine more nine to more. get 200. Let's, Let's do, do it. it. Let's do it. Let's get all the thumbs up on this. And then shout out to L again with the 499 super chat. And uh, as they say, the episode was wild and sad. Such a commentary uh, on motherhood, black women, and depression. How now, Tarare Baby Eater was opposite of Mother. Very, very interesting comment there, connection. Oh, yeah. uh, which now I think about, yeah, there's some some yeah. validity in that. So shout out to L with the dropping the knowledge and, and showing some love with the super chat. Appreciate you there. We uh, did it. We did it. Thank you guys. 200. Appreciate your B. Appreciate your time for being here again. 237 people watching live. If you haven't already, like Brandon uh, has said, thumbs up, share, leave your thoughts in the comments. And again, Tyra uh, from Struggle TV or Struggle Reviews TV and Brandon from Just My Opinion Reviews. The links are in the bio. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Wrapping up the episode, we kind of pretty much talked about the conversation that they had, but mm -hmm. in the conversation, she is going back to Atlanta. She is going back home. And just to point out another thing that she mentioned, and Brandon, you touched on it, that she was having, I mean, to be frank, suicidal thoughts. She closed her eyes in the middle of the road. Mm -hmm. And to me, I think I would more applaud a parent. And again, I'm not a parent, and Tyree can definitely speak to it more. If she's having those thoughts, I think it's good on her to kind of have a moment to separate herself, to regain her sense of uh, yeah. as an individual, because you're, you're an individual purse first. Mm -hmm. And, you know, of course, you're a parent, you, you know, your, your child comes first, but you still have to be you. You have to know who you are as a person. And the fact that she did separate herself, because to be honest, I wouldn't want the mother of my child to be around my child and with having those thoughts. Yeah. Um, so I do applaud her for at least kind of recognizing there's a problem. Now, again, the way she addressed it is much, I wouldn't <laughs> recommend it, but Tyra, just to kind of, again, bringing your perspective as a mother and, and not getting too deep into like thoughts on being here and not of that nature, but do you at least applaud, I guess that, that yeah. the understandings of her separating herself from these yeah. deep thoughts and from her child? I think it, I think it gave us a lot of perspective as, you know, why she was the way that she was, because it was just like, well, damn, Brit, you know, if you need a break, you know, just, you know, just say that, just verbalize that. But it's like, oh, no, this is beyond a break. You had a moment with your daughter where you put, you know, your lives and stuff in danger. That's not OK. And as a mom, I know I have my moments where it's not, you know, that I'm like, you know what? I'm leaving. I'll be back later. I'm, I'm going to yeah. have my I was I'm going to have my moment and yeah. just, you know, have a woosa. And then I'll come back. And that's that, you know, that's always great to have. But to the the fact that it took, you know, a long lost Candace to just happen to be there to get that out of her. And nobody knows that. I'm sure, you know, her parents don't know. Earn doesn't know. And it's just it just right. goes to show that, you know, going back to what we said before, she's not comfortable expressing those things to anybody at the moment. And she was just kind of acting out and just, you know, internalizing all these things and projecting as we saw throughout the episode, I, like with the comment, you know, the baby eater, like I, I could have been that I was putting my baby in danger, you know, so I, I needed to move around. I, I'm glad she did that. And it's it's a it's a sensible choice, but don't don't go as far as don't you know, go. Yeah. Right. You, you know, if you, you're in Georgia, maybe go to, you know, you can go to Texas. Maybe you can go maybe L.A. Take a trip to L.A. Stay in the U.S., right? Just a few hours away, maybe. But Brandon, your thoughts yeah. on just, you know, diving deeper into just that mental pause, that mental mm -hmm. break and separating herself from her child because she was having some dark, she had a cloud over her and she had to kind of mm -hmm. find in a very weird, omni twisted way how to kind of find herself. Yeah, again, uh, it's okay not to be okay. I'm not yeah. mad at her or condemning her for having the suicidal thoughts. I mean, you can't help that, you know? Uh, it's just interesting that, you know, when Aaron was running into her in Europe, you know, he, it, the way I took it, he, he was really concerned. Mm -hmm. uh, he wasn't trying to just like, hey, what is wrong with you? Because he was trying to get something out of himself, like, you yeah. know, a piece of ass, you know, or something, <laughs> you know, oh, it's a mom, I can hit it in there when I want. It's my love baby mama. A piece of ass. <laughs> Sorry, uh, you know, but he, he was I think he was really concerned for her well-being. Yeah. And it's just like so random how it came about, like of her meeting Candace 
there yeah. to like wake her up you know like yeah. what if she never met ran yeah, into Cam? Yeah. how long she could have been over there for years and True. and and then in the in the dream within the dream within the dream within the dream <laughs> you know uh so um yeah man that's, that's all i got um yeah i, I just that's, that's that support again that's that support again b because it's like if you uh even if she didn't want to share like, oh, I had this moment in the car and I blacked out and I endangered, even if she didn't want to share that with Earn being way across the water, if she did, you know, want to at, at any moment, even outside of that, before it got to that point, you know, I need a break as a parent, as a mom. Like I can't even, I think she grew resentment for Earn and that's why she was kind of treating him the way that she was throughout this episode. Like, look at you, you found, you know, yourself, your yeah. place in life. And now yeah. I'm the one lost like this is this isn't fair and i don't even, I, I get to be lost with lolly and you you over here living you know you're living your best life and yep. even if i did want to break i can't even you know you're not up the street for me to <laughs> and then of course you know earn is feeling you know feeling his oats of course because whereas he couldn't support it very much now it's nothing now to you know send to, money yeah. or you know have uh her phone out or be there you know to support her when she you know comes out it's nothing but it's just like yeah this is great but it, it's nothing like you being there and you know being that supportive partner that i need if i do need a break from lottie or yep. just want to find myself she could you know fly and just go with his lifestyle hey i need you to take lottie for a while while i figure things out or you know get myself together he he's 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 not in a position to take care of her yeah yeah and i um i don't want i don't want to get too personal but I know there have been people in my life that I love dearly, love the most, and have told me at points in our life, like, I am not happy right now. And I've said that too. Yeah. And adjustments <clears throat> were made for the better. Mm -hmm. uh, the relationship may not still be perfect, but it is better, damn sure, because we had those conversations, even if it was brief, yep. mm -hmm. you know, so. Well said. And I think the importance of what you just said, B, and to everyone at home, uh, everyone has their own ideologies and, and where they go and how they uh, handle uh, things in life. But I think it's important to take away from this episode, as you guys point out with Candace being that uh, manifestation of help. If you need help out there, guys, uh, you know, it's always mom, dad, brother, sister, best friend, partner in life, whatever the case may be. Talk to people, you know, and uh, by all means, uh, you know, I, I'm not an expert by any means, but anyone at, at watching live, hey, DMs are always open. You know, I always love and, I, and again from Tyra and, and Brandon, we're content creators out here trying to make, uh, you know, separate your what's going on in your life and having fun. Yeah. This is why we're here to have this discussion, having these topics. So if you guys ever need someone to lean on, just, just always reach out. So uh, with that being said, I think we kind of transition to the to the end of the episode and we'll talk about the post credit scene. Yeah, so the P job, we 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 actually yeah. see the P job take place, and I and I don't know if I was just stretching, just like the, the 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 frame of her standing over the man, peeing on him, and looking at the Eiffel Tower. I don't know if there was like a whole metaphor within itself in that scene, but I just thought it was hilarious. And he's <laughs> choking on the P, and the ludicrous songs comes on. Uh, Tyra, your thoughts on the ending? And uh, she got that six grand. She 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 yeah, she got that money. <laughs> I, I thought it just spoke to the growth of Candace and Van in that moment, just to show that that was the least of their concerns. And just that's what, uh, you know, she initially came out there for. And it just became bigger. And it, it was more about, you know, mental health and awareness. And it was to show, yeah, these ladies are not quite there yet. Somebody needs to get that 6K. I'm going to pee. And it was yeah. like so she was so happy and so fulfilled. And it went on for a long time. Fulfilled is the, that is a perfect. She was filled. <laughs> It was uh, like, oh, and, was, then, yeah. and then you hear him like, okay, let's do <laughs> Stop. <laughs> <laughs> but she was just so uh because i believe she was the one in the beginning who voiced like i wish yeah. i could you know get that that's something i'm prioritizing for myself as a person and, and, and an individual and a woman in this moment i'm not because you know they didn't they didn't know you know van like that to be like jarring like you know she's some random french woman a friend of yours here and it's like no it's not that she needs help but they're not concerned with that they're still along for the ride we've already eaten hands they thought her knocking somebody out with the baguette was the most hilarious thing in the world they've been in enjoyment they're not you know quite on that higher plane yet so yeah we're here to pee i'm gonna get that money <laughs> be your thoughts on the uh again we talked about the metaphor <laughs> of drowning uh this man was drowning in a cfp 
literally, man. Uh, he shit, timed what, what, it. Yeah, it was forty-seven seconds. Oh yeah, man. yes, forty-seven <laughs> seconds. I was that was crazy. Was his mouth open the whole time? Like I like man, you know, like he was really literally drowning. He said, "Stop." She felt so relieved. I know she had two bottles of something before she came over. Uh, that's probably the best money she ever got in her life. Uh, best feeling too. But that is nasty. I don't understand why that was not a big enough tarp either. I know they made a mess. Uh, yeah, they why not do it in the bathtub where you know, oh, Lord. the hygiene? Be yeah. like yeah. the hygiene. Safe, you you gonna be you gotta. Yeah, that's just horrible. Gotta disinfect feel, everything. Can you imagine the, the 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 housekeeping coming in and having to take care of that? That's, I quit. I quit. I'm you know. <laughs> yeah, I don't get paid enough for that shit. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah. It, it's wild, oh man. Uh, I I was laughing. It was gross, but I was laughing at the same, same time. Here. So. Same here, man. Well, that brings us to the end of the episode, guys. And now we're going to pivot over to kind of the back half of this video and this breakdown. Again, appreciate you all joining us. We got to talk about this post credits scene. I'm going to probably clip this out, just get Tyra's and Brandon's thoughts and, and make a separate video for this. So uh, listen, we're, we're, we're live, guys. Uh, we're talking. We just talked about the entire episode. And now we're kind of transitioning to our thoughts on this post credit scene. Now, just to set the scene up. Earn, he's I assume he's back in Atlanta. He's back from his vacation or not his vacation, but this tour with Paperboy. He gets a bag. His it has his name on it. They deliver the bag to him. It has, you know, a phone number on there. Earn opens the bag. There's some drugs. There's a you know a metal band in there. And then there's a photo frame. And we we pan out and we zoom in. And it is the same individual from episode one who we saw talking to the black dude on the uh the lake in uh Georgia. It's the same uh, guy in episode four who's talking to Marshall and ultimately shot himself, and now he makes his return. What does it all mean? Uh I'm gonna get my thoughts here in a second, but Tyra, I want to start with you. When you saw that scene, you're just like, wait a minute, does this mean that all these previous standalone episodes, mm -hmm. three smacks, uh, the big paycheck? Uh, you know, Rich Wigger, Poe Wigger, uh, 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 you know, uh, Trinity to the Bone. That's in yeah. the same universe. Same universe. Are, we, yeah. are we in the multiverse here situation? Tyra, your thoughts on this post-credit scene? That's what I said. I say, oh, this has to mean because he was very diligent. He's like, yeah, this is. He's like, no, if you're in, this is your bag. Like this belongs to you. You're you're old. This in a sense. So I was like, oh, and it, it took me a minute to just connect the dots with the picture at all. And I was like, oh, this is old to him. Like so, this is all the same universe. This is who he had to you know give up everything, and he owed reparations in a sense. You know, from ancestors on up to Ern's family. So it's all falling into his lap and i was like okay well what the hell does this mean if everything's connected what's that mean for next season what's going on like is this actually is this actually happening it was it was a lot i just didn't i i didn't know it, it threw me for a loop because i thought you know these were all pretty much statement pieces and social commentary and we were going to you know venture off into because you don't even have to have viewed the first or the second season to even understand what's going on here it's just all you know a whole brand new thing but i'm like if all of these things are connected what does that mean for us for next season that's what i was thinking about i was like it, it was a lot it like it messed up my whole brain <laughs> it, same here uh brandon man same question to you your thoughts on when you got when you saw the package number one i mean let's be honest are you opening up a random package that you know ain't yours uh mm -hmm. and, and not like opening up with like prongs and being super far away uh but then of course you know brandon your thoughts on what what this means for the rest of the this season as well as like tyra alluded to what does it mean for next season I'm like Tyra Thomas too. First of all, and like you, Elliot, hell no, I'm not finna just open up some <laughs> random pack. I know that's not my damn bag. Yo, are you serious? I'm not finna go to jail for you or nobody. I'm, I mean, I'm gonna open it. If I open it, I'm gonna open it right there in front of you. Like, I don't want somebody to record this. Okay, hey, this Or have man, the dude that dropped it off yeah. open that bag. Yeah. <laughs> he is delivering this to me. I, this is, I'm saying this is not my bag, but he sent it mine. I don't know what's in it. I'm opening it now. It could be some type of drugs. In there, who who knows? Uh, Be so, your hands. Well, yeah, hands yeah, yeah. A matter of fact, like I, I don't get it. Like I know he had the Deftone shirt in there. Somebody mm -hmm. left a comment on my thing, talking about, "Oh, you don't get it. You don't understand the Deftones as a reference because black people are always crying out, but everyone is deaf to our tones, and we're what? always ignored." And I was like, oh. "Okay, 
I, you know, I, I, I don't I just even thought he was a fan of Deftones. Like, it would yeah, be different if it was um, a random shirt, but that's an actual band. I, I was not <laughs> able to connect any dots. Um, you know, Tyra had to help me on this. I, I was like, I don't, I don't get it. You know, people are saying these are his the reparations, but yeah. I'm like, what kind of reparations are these? Because yeah. it's a bag of drugs yeah, and a that's picture. It. That's I was like, he took <clears throat> out the, the the drugs and he took. I was like, is this something that we're gonna see? I don't know. We, have, we didn't get a lot of earn this season. Like he was just on go and you know calculating. Yeah. Like he just seemed so um unapproachable this season and so cut off from everybody and just so yeah. tunnel vision with everything. And it's like, well, damn, is earn okay? You know, but it's mm -hmm. uh he did take <clears throat> out the shirt as in like, okay, yeah, I'm gonna wear this. So I don't I don't know you know what exactly that it, could mean yeah it didn't um it just it didn't do anything for me i didn't i, I mean I, I heard what you're saying about okay like okay the multiverse all this connected okay cool yeah, yeah. but I, I i don't know i wasn't like oh this is what they're doing right man. it all makes sense yeah yeah, yeah I'm, I'm still not there so I'm sorry. well guys that are watching live and of course if you're watching the replay let us know your thoughts on it but kind of pivoting so i'm going to share my little elaborate thoughts on this and shout out to another comment that i saw on my on, on the video here from uh uh, this commenter here in regards to, I, I like what they're saying. They they, they believe that the post credit scene teases, you know, next season perfectly and wrapping up everything from how we met white earn at the beginning. And it ties into, you know, seeing black earn and the whole idea of the curse of a white man and, and tying into his comments of richness being a curse. Cause he did say that if you have enough blood and money, you can be white. So I think there is some correlation okay. in this comment here. Uh, and to tie it into my kind of my thoughts on this moment, I think, uh, number one, I think it does kind of, I don't want to say confirms, but I think it's pretty much safe to say that all the events that we saw from these solo episodes will be taking place in our timeline. So now what does that mean for Earn, Van, you know, Paperboy and Darius, mm -hmm. are, you know, them getting their reparations and how does it look with all of them now having money in their pockets? Are they going to be the same? Are they going to be different? Is Paperboy going to stray away from being a rapper and look into some other avenues of, uh, you know, being successful? So I think there's definitely something to say there. But I do think uh, this whole idea of whiteness being a curse will tie into what we see next season and and the whole idea of this season having an undertone of ghost and and you know getting what you deserve and things of that nature i think that that ties perfectly into what we can explore in a season uh season four which will be the finale uh so i guess the question for tyra and brandon do you think we will continue that narrative with white cursedness and having that continuation of seeing our characters what they're going to look like now coming home from Atlanta after this vacation or this tour and having some money in their pocket now how does that play into season four and kind of your expectations for season four it Starting has to tie in yeah. yeah it has to tie in because if it didn't it would this would all be a waste mm -hmm. and it would be pointless so you know uh, that's really the short sweet of it he's so inspired yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and i will say another thing too because i know a lot of people said this is the reparations of it but i do i went i went back and watched episode four and white urn did specifically specifically say to um marshall they lost my package lost they my lost package. my bag so i don't know if he i don't i don't know if that was earns like him trying to give earn like this is my life and all this stuff i literally think he did lose his package and again it ties back into like this still being the same universe but um tyra your thoughts again on this whiteness being the curse can tie that into the fourth season how that can all play out oh gosh i wouldn't put it past them to just act like none of this ever happened and <laughs> right, just whole other stuff like i can't <laughs> have faith that it's going to be a continuation of anything actually like i wouldn't be surprised if it was like okay yeah we're on a whole new set a whole new venture and be like well what the hell mm -hmm. when, the, when the hell did we get into 2030 like it'll, it'll you know be <laughs> something, something completely different like i have no faith that they're going to stick to any scripts uh, I do feel like it is another tie in with, you know, the white man and the e equation of the riches, the, the nice comment that you will have. That's a wonderful comment. <laughs> that was, you know, a, a nice uh, tight, a nice little bow on, you know, what's really going on here. And it's just like, you know, what is going to happen with Earn now that he, you know, now that they do have this, it's like you can you can be white. So does this mean that because, you know, Earn was a little Earn wasn't really just Earn this this entire uh, the show. He's just so. Like, uh, I even felt like there were moments where um, Al was kind of trying to, you know, reach out to him and maybe, you know, have some rapport. And it's just like, yeah, your water's here. This is there. He's just about business. So it's just like, what mm -hmm. what exactly is Earn going to transition into? 
Yeah, no, I agree. Season. Yeah, I agree. And, and another thing, too, for one more thing as far as next season for Brandon and Tyra, do you want these <laughs> the standalone episodes? I know some of them work, some of them didn't. But mm -hmm. Tyra, would you want to see one or two in Atlanta, you know, but not mm -hmm. having our characters being involved in the narrative? Do you want to see these standoff episodes carry on into season four? I wouldn't mind like, you know, one or two, you know, yeah. just because they're like, it's a treat. Like, you know, it's a nice little venture off, but like yeah. every other, no, I, I, if they, you know, I wouldn't be, you know, mad or whatever. I'm still going to watch, but yeah. preferably I would <laughs> prefer that it was, you know, maybe, you know, one or two. And especially since this is not a show where we get, you know, 20 episodes, you right. know, so it's, right. it's nice to really pivot to what we know and what we're familiar with and who we've been following. But, you know, one or two is cool. Same for you, B. Again, this is the final season. So I personally, I don't want standalones, even though I didn't enjoy them. But I want to mm -hmm. spend the last 10 episodes with our main cast. Uh, but B, do you have a difference in opinion? Would you like to see, maybe not like Tyra said, every other episode, but maybe one, you know, one in the middle of the season and one like second to last episode, like a standoff, standalone episode? Uh, it doesn't matter to me. If if they're gonna have the standalone episode, they have to connect. They have to connect. Yeah. E even with the ones from season three, you know, like the ones from season four need to connect with season three. If we're not gonna do, if like the, a if follow just up, gonna, yeah, a follow, follow up. up. If they're, if they're just, okay. yeah, exactly, a follow up. If they're just gonna leave it alone, yeah. You know, the Trinity to the Bone, like, <laughs> see what little but too. It, it, it was like what it was. It didn't have nothing to do with nothing. You know, like I, t for me at least. So if. And we find out that you know Ern, that's Ern's lost, long lost grandmother, auntie, or something, and they tied in. Okay. He comes home like my grandma or auntie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's you know cool. And you know the little Sebastian start hanging out with Ern, or he mentor him at the I don't know, just something. It, it needs to connect. Yeah. I, I don't want all this just randomness. That's you know Ooh, that would be know. pretty interesting, especially with Darius being so wild of a character. If Darius was somehow related to um, yeah. that woman Sylvia, I think her Sylvia right, was right. her name. That would be kind of funny if they were connected right. it that way. Uh, and, and and again, I do think there were, looking back on those solo episodes, there were connective tissues, thematically speaking, like Trinity Bone, for example, those white people not culturing their son, he yeah. found culture somewhere else. And then we're seeing that now with our main cast, they're seeing different cultures and how different people, you know, from Tupac dying the way he died, white people wearing blackface. I think there was some thematic connectivities, uh, but mm -hmm. not as... Um, Connective as, as as I know some people want it to be, but uh, any any thoughts on that, Tyra, in regards to just kind of I guess f f solo episodes and the connectiveness thematically speaking. Man, they this is the final season. They have to go out with. I have no time for any. <laughs> even though they were wonderful, there becomes a sense of like, oh, that kind of felt like a filler episode, and it's distracting yeah. for what I really want to know about with these characters. Like, stay on task, fulfill me in every single way. Like, I need it's, it's the last. It's the last that we're ever going to get from you guys. It needs to be amazing, and it needs to be. You know, I don't want him to feel like, oh, this is the last army. I got to get all of this in. Right. You know, like you know, you don't have to fit every everything under the rainbow that you know every little tweet like no no we'll we, you know we don't we don't need all of those things but I, I really hope it's great and we stick to what we know and we really close out with these characters in a great yeah. way because this is the last that we're going to get it's from last. them so yeah. it would be unfortunate for us to be you know sitting with the little boy in the tree hallelujah yes lord like okay yeah this is you know this is nice but i want to know you know what's going on with with darius and yeah. al and Ern and van and where where they where they're go where are they going to end up you know in the future i agree i agree and um before we wrap it all up i have one more little fun little thing i wanted to bring to us and everyone in the chat uh definitely share your thoughts on this we had 10 episodes in season three. We kind of gave you our thoughts about the season as a whole, but I just want to kind of know from a, a ranking perspective, I'm going to bring up all 10 episodes this season. Uh, you don't have to rank all 10, but if you had like your top two, top three, top five, or if you want to rank all 10 of them, by all means do so. But Brandon, I'm going to start with you. Again, it doesn't have to be all 10 episodes. I have them listed below. But if you were to rank them in regards to which one stood out to you, um, what what's that list look like for you, man? Again, from three slaps, uh, Santa Claus is coming to so on and so forth. What was your top tier memorable episodes of this season? Number one, of course, is a uh, rich, rich wigger, po wigger. Uh, number two is three slaps. That was the first episode. <laughs> um, number three will probably be episode two, I think. Um, with the Tupac stuff. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Let me see. Center class is coming. Uh, 3 0. 
the three old men in the tree. I remember that the big payback. I really didn't cover for that one. Cancer mm-hmm. attack. I forgot what that one was about. That was with uh socks and the whole phones being stolen um, situation. The big payback. Um, I don't know, man. I gotta think about them for sure. Yeah. yeah well, your, but, well, I guess I'll say what your favorite of the show of was uh Rich Rich. Rich oh, that was your for favorite. sure. Yeah. For sure. And, and, and three slaps is number two. Number two. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Tyra, no pressure. No pressure. Well, you know what? If you want to, uh, did you want to make a little list? And or maybe did you guys want? I can share my list, and you guys want to do your list share your list do that? LB, okay because i okay. feel like you've had time to i, I have <laughs> thought about this i was going to actually make a separate video i just didn't have time to kind of fit into the schedule but i i think for me my number one episode is three slaps uh because as a tv watcher being thrown off we haven't seen earn van al and darius in four years and the fact that they open and of course we got earned at the very last this episode but the fact that they tied into Devonte Hart's story and all that stuff going on and a lot of people not even being aware of that story to see in this episode mm-hmm. and had it all you know i think donald glover said that he wanted this to be like a folk like a fairy tale for black people so we know unfortunately what happened to Devontae Hart? He, you know, yeah. and the other kids as well. They they passed away. But in this narrative, we got a happy ending, which was you know nice to have that kind of fantasy be played out. So I just thought that that episode was fantastic. Second episode to me, uh, and this is Tyra. You brought up many, many, uh, you know, very beginning. You said Paperboy was you know a lead character, and I totally agree with you. And that's why for me, uh, New Jazz was my second favorite episode because I love exploring his his mind and i thought this was a perfect sequel to woods which was another episode that tied into him and his mindset and him losing his mom and i think this obviously with lorraine being brought up the name of his mom so i just love was it real was it fake was it in his head that whole culture uh cancel club scene was so great to me so that to me was my second favorite episode uh followed by number three Rich Wigger, Paul Wigger. I mean, we talked about it last week, B. It was just so many different things to, to, to laugh about, but also talk about in the conversation being had and him passing as a, you know, he's, he's biracial, but he leans more on his white side and all the different stuff that we got there, you know, rest in peace, Kevin Samuels, all that stuff. So that is my number three, which brings me to number four, which I got to say, uh, this uh, white fashion to me was a really good, solid episode as well. Again, doesn't not a coincidence that it was a more of a uh, an owl focused episode and just kind of tying into does he want to continue this lifestyle as being a rapper, as being paper boy, and all the stuff that comes with it, uh, and him, you know, kind of testing him as a as an individual. So that's my number four. Uh, let's see, five is probably uh the old man in the tree because I, I think that that episode really kind of gave us like what's going on with Van. They kind of planted mm-hmm. the season in episode, and obviously going on with Fernando and the tree and everything going on with Darius, and that's where we got introduced to Socks crazy ass, which uh brings us into my next episode is probably uh the the cancer episode, cancer attack. I thought that was a really interesting episode, a very ominous ghost tones, and and Wiley, we can't forget Wiley, that weird ass dude, and was mm-hmm. he real? Was he a get a ghost? Was he's uh Al subconscious is the conversation a lot of people are bringing up uh, and then kind of wrapping up the rest of my uh, this kind of the last three Trace to the bone. I had a good time with that episode. Little Sebastian and, and Sylvia had me dying <laughs> laughing. Uh, and again, I took away just like the lack of culture he was given. He had to seek culture elsewhere. Uh, and we saw again, Tom Hanks son being in there and we, you know, everyone has their thoughts on him kind of still in people's culture. So I really have fun with that one. And then also, I guess the last ones I have on my list would probably be uh, episode two, which, you know, it didn't really, I enjoyed it. The Tupac moment was funny, but it didn't, it's not a standout episode to me. And then the finale for me is probably where it comes in last. And even though I really enjoyed the finale, I just think the other nine episodes had a little bit more to say, Mm -hmm. a little bit more to offer and things of that nature. So there's my list, top 10. Wow. Tyra, if you (laughs) want to, again, you don't have to share all 10 if you have a top three or top five. five Okay. Personally, it wasn't. You know how it was in a standout season, right? right. <laughs> but first for me is going to definitely be New Jazz. I really enjoyed the connection with uh, the previous season. They like connected it so well, even with the three dudes approaching him and his counter reaction. Like I loved it. And second would be um, three slaps for, you know, the same reasons. I thought that was amazing. I, um, uh, I kind of enjoyed the big payback. So that would be third because it was just, I was like, whoa, just, it was, it was nice trying to, you know, connect the dots there and go on the journey with that person. I would say uh, fourth would be cancer attack. And then my fifth episode would be the old man in the tree. Nice. That's nice. where I'm at. 
Very yeah. cool. Well, Mainly listen, though, New Jazz yeah. and Big Three Slaps. Those were like those the best ones. episodes yep. to me. I agree. Would you say they're top? They compete with like a Teddy uh, Perkins type of level as far as they quality and writing. Perkins is special, you know? That's special. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, um, New Jazz is pretty freaking close. Like, and three slaps for him to, them to bring that back up into the forefront with Devontae Hark is I, it was, you know, it kind of, you know, tugged at your heartstrings and like poked at your guilty conscience. Like, yeah, you, you forgot about him because I, like, we, we did, you know, we become so desensitized to stuff because we see, you know, different occurrences. It's like we really did. And it took me, it, it was like fun to go on the journey and then connect the dots and go, this is looking familiar but i'm not sure what's happening here and then once you get you know free hugs and the hat and the whole you're like oh i know what this is so that was great and it was a great you know open for the season to let us know this is not going to go the way you think it is <laughs> well said well said and also too i, I we we got to get uh tracy back he got to come back for season four he, <laughs> he, somehow like we we follow up with him he, he the waves are gone you know when we follow up with him and he's like now he has his own business or something that would be really <laughs> trippy if that's the case but listen man this has been two hours of just pure fun uh you know thought-provoking great conversations uh and i couldn't be more happier to share these conversations with uh the two people that you guys see on the screen now so mm -hmm. brandon tyra i appreciate you both um mm -hmm. this is a lot of fun i can't wait for season four hopefully we can have more conversations about the show in the future uh but outro and out starting with you tyra again i'm mm -hmm. so so happy you're able to join the channel for the first time and hopefully i'm so happy that <laughs> from brandon I, I met you and then hopefully we can do more of these collabs in the future but if mm -hmm. you want to let the people at home know again where they can find you what's the next awesome content you have lined up for them and all that good stuff Oh, man, we are, you know, Struggle Reviews TV. Just go on and look it up. It's there. It's popping. I always have some interesting thumbnails and little snippets and things going on for you to find me and just, you know, get a little nibble of my content to see if it's something that you're interested in. Coming up, I, I'm going to do a comparison of Firestarter. It has been recently remade, and I want to discuss that and venture off also into my throwback territory. And someone paid for High Tension. I have not seen High Tension, but it's supposed to be absolutely fabulous. And a lot of people have come and said like, oh, I can't wait for you to watch it and break it down. So that's going to be coming up soon. And also me hitting my 5K celebration video. We're going to be talking about Crooklyn. So make sure you are outside for those videos. <laughs> Definitely. Can't wait to see those reviews. And and again, 5,000 is right around the corner. 10,000 is after that and so on and so forth. It's well-deserved. Such a great uh, <laughs> channel. Such great energy said the jokes are there you all saw it the, the, the tour forget earn or uh paper boys tour we need that uh struggle reviews comedy tour i would definitely be the first one to, uh, to buy those tickets but again tyra thank you so much for the time yes, and the energy and the thoughts me. and all that stuff and i appreciate you and uh transition over to you b again you you joined me last week you joined me again i appreciate your time man and just so thankful for uh for you being here today and sharing your thoughts on the episode even though it wasn't your favorite i think we we had some talks that you man that you know might have liked, liked it just a little bit more uh but at the end of the day man i appreciate you and, and the same thing man if you can let the people know where they can find you uh what time your your live stream will be tonight and then what's the next set of uh reviews you have lined up for the people at home yeah, man. Again, uh, Elliot, thanks for having me, man. It was great. It's an honor. And I'm glad you invited uh, Tyra with Struggle Reviews TV. That was a, a, a very pleasant, <laughs> wonderful surprise. Made me very, very happy. Uh, and yeah, after talking about the episode, I do like it and appreciate it a bit more. So uh, I thank you for that as well. And Tyra, uh, High Tension is a great film. I love that movie. And I cannot <laughs> wait for you to watch it. And I cannot wait to watch your breakdown because that is I, I remember that movie and that was uh it, it was good i'm just gonna mm -hmm. I, I really enjoyed that one so i'm looking forward to your breakdown uh but yeah this is b avery over here with just my opinion reviews please subscribe to the channel um you know elliot just reached 25k he about to hit 26k yes. uh congrats tyra on hitting 5k i'm on my way to 40k so everybody here if you can subscribe to me as well i would appreciate that later on today in four hours and like less than 30 minutes uh, on my channel, I'm going to have a, uh, a movie news roundup show. Uh, Elliot and, of course, Tyra, they're, they're always invited, you know. Uh, but I'm just going to be talking about all the movie news that happened this week. You know, uh, we're going to be getting a new sequel to Law Abiding Citizen that had Jamie Foxx and Gerard Butler in it. We're going to be talking about that. Also, there was a Disney Plus new show, Daredevil, that was announced. 
you know, some people are excited about that and concerned about how that's going to play out. We're going to be talking about that. We're going to talk about everything that's happened in the movie and news entertainment world this past week. And again, that's on my channel, 6.30 p.m. CST. And to answer your question, also, uh, there's a new episode of The Time Traveler's Wife that's going to be popping out tonight, I think around like 9, 9.30. I'm going to try my best to have my recap ready for that as well. I'm going to have to start working on it as soon as I'm done here. So, uh, yeah, make sure you come through and subscribe. Follow me on social media. Got a lot of great content as far as movies, TV recaps, movie news, entertainment, all that good stuff. So uh, can't wait to see you there. Yes, sir. And then again, I'm sorry. I was trying to like do the whole producing thing behind the scenes and flash. Thing, but <laughs> as you guys can see, here's Brandon's channel here. Let's come at 40K again. He will be live tonight and I'm hoping that maybe we'll be able to join him tonight. Uh, but reviews, TV reviews, movie reviews, all that great stuff. Check them out. And then let me pivot over to uh, Tyra's page here for you guys can know what it looks like, where it's at. And uh, like you guys said in the comments, shout out to her for crossing that 5K and uh, many more subscribers are coming because you guys are missing out if you're not subscribed to channels what a what a great channel what a great individual and you guys are missing out if you're not subscribed so let me just go ahead and pull up her uh channel for you guys to see what it looks like and know where to find her um and all that good stuff so here it is here again love the thumbnails love the energy love everything she's got going so guys and the, and the skits like i said if you guys think i was joking check out the shorts they are hilarious so shout out to tyra shout out to my man b and uh this has been such a fun time and again like i mentioned up top I, I i'm a big fan of atlanta and i'm gonna go ahead and continue these conversations so hopefully every thursday starting this thursday we're gonna do a rewatch series a watch along watch party whatever you want to call it where we're going to be revisiting season one season two season three leading up to season four so this thursday i'm gonna probably leave it in the community tab if you're subscribed so probably thursday uh, 9 p.m. Central Time, we're going to start episode one of Atlanta and work our way all the way up to season three, up into season four. So if you guys want to have those conversations, we will continue to have the Atlanta discussions every Thursday, if time allows it, uh, to have a watch party every Thursday night. So with that being said, for myself, Brandon and Tyra, you all have been awesome. Appreciate the thumbs up, the shares, the great comments, the super chats, so on and so forth. If we can continue that conversation in the replay, I would appreciate it. Leaving your thoughts in the comment section. You guys have been awesome. This has been a fun journey. There's more shows and movies to come out for that Tyra's going to be covering, Brandon's going to be covering, as well as me. So uh, keep an eye out for all that content. You guys are awesome. Have a great rest of your Sunday, and we'll catch you guys on the flippity flip. Wash your hands. Yes. <laughs>